Hey, Link Frequencies are open, everybody. Welcome Woo! back to Shield of Tomorrow, our Star Trek RPG show here in GNS Live. Uh, welcome back, Bonnie. Hi, guys. Bonnie. Bonnie in space. Bonnie in space. Bonnie in space. I, am the, I am the Shackleton in yes, space. Yes, we're all out of uniform today. Oh. Yes. Um, to go ahead and address that, we're all are out of we? uniform today. I don't know if you, you <laughs> spotted our, our episode title on Twitter, but it is Shore Leave at Last. So The captain told, made me. Whoops. Yeah, so I basically told everybody they didn't have to be in uniform today. I missed the memo, too, but then I got it right before. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's cool. Fun. I'm asleep still. It's so. true. Yeah. It's in character. Yeah. You're sleeping yeah. up. Look, you guys, there's the Sally ride. Nice. Here's the asteroid <laughs> belt. Just inviting, inviting the internet. Gravitation. I know. Um, <laughs> so we got a couple of announcements today. The big one is our giveaways are back. Yeah. Um, and, but I have legal language <clears throat> that I'm required to read now because of California's gambling laws. So <clears throat> here is our giveaway uh, information. Really? Oh, yes. Yeah. This is pretty. It's pretty We're crazy. So hardcore. No purchase necessary. Open to all legal residents of the United States, excluding Rhode Island. I have no idea why. Sorry, um, Rhode Island. Sorry, Rhode Island. Not sorry, um, Rhode Island. Must be 18 here. years or <laughs> older to enter. <laughs> Find official roles here. We're gonna post those on the Twitters and on the. Uh, or on the, the Twitch chats and, 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 so, and the media stuffs. Uh, all anyone has to do to be considered is to be active in chat for the show, and then we will announce the winners near the end of the show, and I will announce them before they sign off. And I'm thinking, do, does that, or, do they have to be active in chat just in general, or is it, is it during the break? Do we know? Oh, um, uh, does it, do they have to be active in during the break, or is it just during the show? Is there a key? Yeah, I can do either way. Okay, cool. Then we'll just do it during the break, because that's always a lot of fun. Uh, I feel that legalese just reads like my uh, my Tinder profile. Oh. Yeah. Must be legal resident, 49 states, not I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's why I swiped on you. Because must be 18 or over. Must be 18 or over, right. Must be active in chat. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we, are, yeah right. we are giving away. It's a very broad net you cast there. Yeah. We, are, we are giving away two temporal agent starter packs for PC on Star Trek Online, because our buddies over at Star Trek Online are giving us stuff. And the fun one is, is we are giving away two copies of the Star Trek Adventures core book nice. uh, in PDF. Cool. Nice. So you'll be able to get those right away, because Modifius is hooking us up with that. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, um, stay active in chat. Um, the yeah. other thing I have to announce, uh, too, is that um, GNS's uh, anniversary stream is coming up. Um, uh, we've been around for a while, man. I wish they could turn the story of this company into a movie because it would be a inter it would be like I I, w I want Aaron Sorkin to write it, like like, <laughs> like just do like the newsroom version of Gina. Not like, that serious. I know. I know. Do I get well, to cast sometimes it gets serious? For it. Can I cast like myself? Social? Yes, cast yourself. No, but I'm like cast someone as myself. As like yourself? I want to I want to hold auditions for me. No, I'd want to watch you. Uh, yeah. But would you do yeah. your own stunts? I want to play Marisha. Mary. Uh, I would awesome. like to audition for the role of Marisha. Ray. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but on the 10th anniversary stream, um, there's going to be games, we're going to be doing lots of stuff. Sax told me I could go ahead and announce this, but uh, myself, Amy Dallin, and Sax Carr are going to be running a D&D game. Um, and we're going to be trading off. And I'm happy to announce that the D&D game is going to be set in a very familiar world. Hey. A very yeah, familiar in world. Face, Eric? Uh, I thought so that was just his face. Max, uh, Matt, Matt's been giving me pointers, but uh, I, I can't. I'm not allowed to say any more. But I've got a lot. I, I've got some interesting stuff planned for it, and Matt's giving me a lot of information to, to build us a nice uh, day-long campaign for this. So I'm really excited about that. That's gonna be fun. Hey, uh, yes. They can be active at any time during the show. They can be active any time yes. during the show. Because of law. Because of law. Oh. And uh, so screw, just screw the break. Gamblers. Screw the break. Uh, any time during the show, apparently. <laughs> Um, sex car, ladies and gentlemen. I just thank you, Sarah. Sarah. That was amazing. Sarah. 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 Amazing. Dude has got a baritone. I've not been invited to a vlog. I will not. I am. <laughs> um, and that's it for my announcements. Does anybody out there have any announcements for the greater area? Yes? Go ahead. Oh, you know what I'm going to say. Uh, what are you saying? Tomorrow. Say? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, the Improvised Generation Season 4 opens tomorrow. So exciting. Um, if you're in the LA area or know someone who is, tell them to come. We have nine shows over nine weekends, March through April. And do me a favor right now. If you could go to your Twitters and just at Improvised Gen, G-E-N, and just give us some love, because we've been, my team has been working so hard on this season. And it's like promoting improv shows 
is exhausting, mm-hmm. believe it or not, and mm-hmm. for very little, no pay, no pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just give us some love <laughs> on the Twitters, uh, and 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 yeah, I'm super excited for this season it's and for my, my Find it, it on, really there's a, the, I, I know that about 96% of you guys are not local, so yes, yes. check and it out on YouTube. Yes, yes that's it is a great posted point. on YouTube. I keep forgetting, <laughs> during our break today, mm-hmm. please remind me anyone, okay. anyone and everyone, I'm gonna tweet our YouTube link because oh, we've cool. been, we've also been like kind of tidying that up and making mm-hmm. sure like all of our new friends and new new Ox Crew members can watch all of our seasons and this season too. This season will be on YouTube. So cool. uh, yeah, I right will on. send you a link and you can subscribe and mash the little bell for notifications and stuff. All right, right on. And if you're not in the LA area tomorrow <laughs> to see her show, but you're in the Minneapolis area. Are you going to Minneapolis tomorrow? I'm going to Minneapolis <laughs> Arriving Tonight. tomorrow, oh so as God. soon as I am oh done with Shield tomorrow, and here uh-huh. I am taking a lift to the airport and going to. She works hard for the moon. <laughs> and I'm taking yeah. a red eye flight to Minneapolis. So a big thank you to MarsCon for not uh, requiring me to be at the con for Friday because I negotiated because I was like, but Shield Aww. tomorrow. So they said fine, just show up on Saturday. So I'm taking a red eye flight tonight, showing up tomorrow. We uh, Xander and I as the library bards. We have two concerts tomorrow, I miss, I miss and then I fly back yeah. Sunday. Miss, you missed it. That was a fast it. one, though, yeah. too. It's and true. then t- next weekend, I'm in Tennessee. Yeah. Dang. In Memphis. Yep. Come so we'll see have, me in Memphis. We'll have another. Damn Bonnie girl. will be out again next week. I'm going to be we'll out again next week, you guys. I'm so oh. sorry. But I've already lined up the guest. Mm. So, oh. yeah, so already, that, that means wrap it up. What I'm gonna say? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really awkward when Q just teleports into you by accident tonight, killing you instantly. But oh, you, you know God. what? It's gonna be spectacularly gonna awesome. Be so oh, there's no there's no too. guarantee I wasn't Q the entire time. That's true. Yeah. Think He's about that. Like Internet. An we'll find out tonight. Adorable. I guess. Um, yeah. It, like a tornado. A yeah. Yeah. Little announcement. Uh, we're live frontier. We're live yeah. frontier. That's right. Yeah. Started this week on Project Alpha. Dude, it's kind of amazing. You might see a little bit of this. Uh, you can use uh, coupon code FRONTIER to get 60 days free, so you can watch it from the very beginning. 60. Nice. 60 days. That's, that's, that's they, a lot That of was days. their commitment. Dude, to uh, yeah, I've been, I've been helping out. Uh, I've been pushed that up the hill uh, since uh, I got the job for director of development January last year. And yeah. uh, it was so exciting to see it come together and wow. what he's put. Yeah. It, We're Live is, is going to be, it's, it's, our, it's our big thing right now. So definitely check it out. I think you guys will dig the hell out of it. I have uh, a question. Is it every week? Every Wednesday. Okay. Mm-hmm. Every, every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, Wednesday, new episodes. Okay. All right. So uh, last announcement before we jump into the episode tonight, I just want to wish a very happy birthday to Gates McFadden. Yay! It is Gates McFadden's birthday, and she was super nice to one of our crew members, so I'm always going to be a Aww. fan. Yeah. 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 And it's Dr. Seuss Day, which means yeah. nothing to Aww. you guys, but all the places will go space! Yeah. <laughs> Doctor, 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 doctor. Will doctor. Go. Oh, right. the, oh, the spaces, spaces will go. go. All right, so okay. let's go ahead and jump into. That was the into... second to last oh. announcement, I think. Yeah, I yeah. think there's one over here. Did we miss something? Hi. Yeah. I like this show. If you like this show and want to watch people who like this show oh. like this show loquaciously, join us after this show at 7:30 on Alpha for Behind the Shield, where you like me. We'll be excited! I can watch what you guys have to say about me after the show? Yes. Oh my god, wait. Yes. I'm gonna scroll how much area is wonderful. A part of a commentary. <laughs> and with and that, we're gonna jump into tonight's episode of Shield of Tomorrow. Oh, welcome back, everybody. I was just giving everyone a thumbs up. Uh, and, and you, the viewer at home, thumbs up. 
Okay. Well done. Well done for tuning in today. <laughs> Gain a momentum. We <laughs> um, oh, oh. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick up where we last left off, uh, which was a very touching, slightly awkward moment with uh, Mala Ren passing out. Now, uh, the quick recap is is that the Sally ride was able to finally set in to Narendra Station. Um, lots of revelations have taken place for the Sally ride over the past couple of days. Uh, aside from the yeah. fact that uh, that you guys have been trying to figure out how you're going to essentially forge like a document. You're trying to forge what happened with the battle damage that the Sally Ride took in her encounter with the with the, uh, the Cavort class Bird of Prey. Uh, you've also, you're trying to figure out how to, in, in your attempts to figure out how to make it look like a Romulan attack, which didn't really go too well. Sally Ride was relieved to find upon arriving at the Narendra, at Narendra Station that the ceasefire has been called because of some pretty crazy shiza that was going on on DS9. Apparently, a covert operation into the heart of the Klingon Empire revealed that General Martok, <gasps> Chancellor Galron's second in command, his right-hand man, was a changeling this whole time. Whoa. Drama. And has been influencing Klingon policy and tactics and strategies and gaining intel of horrible, horrible news. But. The assassination attempt on Galron's life has been thwarted by one. By whom? Captain Sisko. Wow. Captain Sisko. Captain Ben that Sisko. Guy. Sisko. That son and, of a bitch. And, <laughs> yes. And, and his team of, of gallant goers. Uh, not to mention uh, a Odo changeling. as well, yes. Mm -hmm. A former changeling. Yeah. Odo. By the way. Oh, what, what do you mean spoiler. former? What happened? A yes. former changeling? There's, what there's, happened? So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody watching at home <laughs> that if you are 20 years overdue for yeah. DS9, <laughs> There's nothing we can do to help you because Shield of Tomorrow is in in the <laughs> DS9 timeline right now, yeah. and it, there's gonna be spoilers. The statute of limitations more, is more definitely. Or Aliza. I, I warned I warned Aliza at the top of this of this campaign that there was gonna be spoilers. Binge harder. Not much you can do. Binge harder. Um, binge harder. I, that's what binge I would do. Binge harder. Yes. You get a bit faster. Um, so. Uh, Sally Ride got a little bit of respite. When you arrived at the station, things have calmed the hell down. And more importantly, General Cargan has had to pull back his influence from the station, giving Admiral Hebert the, the room that she needs in order to uh, be the leader of the station that she was meant to be at the beginning. She's got her own quarters back. Starfleet has been given its agency back. The ceasefire, this is now considered neutral territory. And both governments are, are made to respect one another. Or the Klingons can leave. Very unlikely. Um, but as a result, um, one thing that I, I failed to mention in the last episode is some Klingon personnel have left the station because they're no longer bound to mm -hmm. what's taking place here. And it's no secret that a lot of the Klingons on board the station want to get to the front line where the glory is. Uh, nobody thinks that babysitting this Federation station that tactically means nothing to them right now is worth a damn. Uh, the Romulan menace, it's out there, but it's nothing the Klingons haven't dealt with before. Cargan seems to be the one with the real interest in protecting the station and in his interests. Um, that ties in, of course, to the other reveal that Tolosh is actually a man, uh, Klingon named Kolar. Now, for everyone wondering at home, because I've been getting a lot of questions of how the hell you spell Kolar, it's with a Q. It's Q O L O, uh, Col uh, it's Q O L A R, Kolar. Yeah. Um, now, is it with an, uh, is it, I, I, with the, Apostrophe? Yeah, apostrophe? it's not. I, 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 I it could go. It, actually, it, because it could go either way. It could honestly yeah, no. go either way. Probably it's cool. Cool. And then, Yeah. Cool. I mean, there's no K in Klingon anyway. True. It's very true. There's no. Um, so, um, so Kolar Son Tovek uh, revealed himself to actually be a member of the Klingon Defense Force who is rising in rank specifically to position himself closer to General Cargan because he has a blood feud with Cargan. Mm -hmm. And he's been looking for the right opportunity to kill him. Family's um, drama. Yeah, oh, that's the Klingon yeah, Empire. Yeah. But he can't simply challenge Cargan because mm -hmm. Cargan is an admiral and he is a commander. Um, and yeah. usually you're only able to. Ch there's not typically. A way there's not typically a rule in place that prevents people from challenging people of like certain rank status. Like Bex cannot challenge certain officers, for example. Um, but uh, there is a, a, a pecking order in that uh, Cargan has a ton of influence, and getting close enough to him and being able to kill him with honor um, means that uh, Kolar is doing this. He's he's taking the long road going the long way around to get this done. He wants to utterly destroy Karkin, and he hasn't been making that much of a secret. Um, what else? Of course, the vision 
that the crew of the Sally Ride has received oh. from who yeah. knows where. Oh yeah, forgot uh -huh. about that. Oh uh, yeah, the whole vision of the Bajoran orb and uh, lots going on. Of course, you also ran into Lynn Zadis back in the station as things are. Um, so yeah, not all of us, just one. Just one person ran into. And Throlo's kind of just backing away, <laughs> but. Uh, Essentially, Narendra Station is finally becoming somewhere you can find a little bit of R&R. &R. Um, we are at it's evening time right now. You guys were headed back to the ship, if I'm not... What's that? You didn't say, like, who I am, why I'm here. <laughs> so you guys are... Anyway, so as I was saying, you guys are back on the ship with an intelligence officer that you managed to uh, pick up. <laughs> yes, it turns out there is an officer um, that has been stationed here and was responsible for the intel you guys received about the bird of prey that was about to uncover Federation assets. Thanks, bro. Um, and just to clarify, Sage has not met him yet. Uh, I don't think so, no. Yeah, okay. Sage is so, not. Sage has been oh, sort of yeah, Sage MIA I went off since. my own little... Yeah. Um, Sage, Sage took, a, took a step back and got permission to uh, to leave the ship and sort of take some downtime. Um, also, sorry, uh, B. Dave, but maybe the fakest sounding name ever. It's just so fake sound sounding. Like Your name is uh, so fake. Fork, Fork and Coonard. Fork and Coonard. <laughs> named after a legendary <laughs> earthling of the early 21st what? century. An engineer, I believe. Uh, yes. Video engineer. Of video some kind. engineer. Uh, and, and, and entertainer, also. <laughs> really? Uh, wearer of many hats. Really? That's yes. amazing. Very impressive um, person. So tonight, uh, with you guys on board the Sally Ride having a conversation and you dropping that bomb <laughs> on the group telling them that Tolosh is actually very dangerous, hinting that you may know something there. Uh, we're going to start tonight's episode back uh, in uh, the back on the promenade um, and the at the bar area, which is just right now. It's just called the bar. <laughs> Uh, the promenade hasn't created okay. a name, has but it has two R's. Has there been? A, <laughs> is there a time? Is there? Been, is there a time jump? Like how many hours? There's going to be. There's, there's going, going to be. be yeah. Okay. It's, but this um, one is not yet. Yeah, but how drunk is Chief Ren? Is what I'm trying to. Well, I'm she's unconscious. Asleep. I'm unconscious. Yeah. yeah. Maximum. Um, uh, maximum uh, drunk. <laughs> maximum <laughs> drunkness. So we're so going to begin tonight um, with. Uh, for the most part, the shift is getting a bit late, and so people are starting to. Other shifts are coming on on the station, the Ranger Station. Um, the next, the next uh, shift, uh, Federation officers, is coming on, as well as the wait staff. Um, and as you guys, as this, as the personnel is beginning to change, and the lights are sort of dimmed, sort of to to to, you know, mimic that cycle, that light cycle of being on a planet, give people some stability. Um, as the shift is beginning to change. Uh, Lark, you're you're arriving inside the promenade right now, just as the lights are going, and as they're starting to come down, um, you're approaching the promenade, and to your left and right, you see personnel. It, it's it's interesting because it, there's a dramatic shift in attitude towards each other. Mm -hmm. There are Klingons and Federation people walking past each other now, and you would not normally. The tension would, has been released. You can't, you, you would never have guessed that you were at war a week ago. Yeah. Everyone's kind of walking and moving. It's, it's almost like everyone's like, finally, and they can get back to business. And mm -hmm. everyone's kind of treating each other with that sort of mutual understanding of like, mm -hmm. we're just going to keep moving forward at this point. Um, so you don't see a lot of antagonization going on with the Klingons. Everyone's just kind of moving about their business. Even Brooke, you're actually walking past his store right now because you have to to get to the, uh, the bridge. So uh, the promenade. So Brug store as you're walking past him, it's on the right, and it, it it does look like a large alcove that moves into the back. I would say it's probably about like maybe 60 or 70 feet deep into the station, mm -hmm. lined with shelves and all sorts of holographic knickknacks. It looks like a store filled of spectacular, interesting junk. I'll go shopping later. Um, and you do see a Ferengi having a conversation with two employees who look agitated as you walk by. Probably business as usual in mm. Brugs. Um, stepping up onto the steps, you see um, there's this large uh, railing that goes around the entirety of the bar. The center of this area is, uh, it, it, the, the promenade bar area is very large. It's big enough to accommodate maybe 200 occupants, so like restaurant size. Oh yeah. And um, some of the wage staff exchanging jokes and whatnot as they move off. They can, from the last time you saw them, because there was barely any wait staff here at all, people are cracking jokes. Maybe it's like to release tension, but you're definitely getting an atmosphere of just like yeah. around Narendra right now. Have they done a last call yet? Uh, 
not not really a last call. Really? Yeah. Not really a last He's call like, here. I don't know how it works. Like not Vegas. really a last call. Sage doesn't really do bars. Um, Vegas, Vegas rules. Yeah. You, Vegas. You, see, <laughs> you see a female bartender coming on as a Saurian is leaving, and the Saurian is having a conversation. Saurian's very tall. I, I imagine him looking like a six foot five Doug Jones in, in lizard makeup. <laughs> Saurian nice. just kind of like very, very thin, um, but very kind, using hand gestures as he's talking, and tells, and, and he's saying something, and the woman laughs and she kind of glances over and he points and off in the corner <laughs> people are laughing at me off yes. in the corner um, you kind of glance over to see what they're, they're looking at and off in the corner you see um, uh, a bundle of brunette hair one of them is tied into a bun, but the other oh. one has come loose. Yeah. And it's kind of splashed over the shoulders. I recognize that bun anywhere. Yeah. It and you see Lin Zadis as, as, as this head is just resting on his shoulder and he's just kind of, he glances down and is looking at her every now and then, but mostly he's just looking out at the stars, but he's, you, you see the, the blue head of Lin Zadis. Yeah. Um, and then uh, as you're kind of noticing that, the you realize the sorry is standing in front of you and he says, Oh, good evening. Uh, arriving. Would you like a drink? Um. What was she having? <gasps> she was having a malorin. Oh my goodness! I Would you like know. to try one? No. Uh, I don't know if I should. <laughs> I've always wanted to try blood wine. <laughs> but blood wine. Well, we maybe have that. I should. Tr I'll try it. I'll try a malorin. She will help you do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Another mala. Have a good evening. Thank you. And he moves off as this woman, um, she has like pixie cut hair. Oh, no. um, it's, it's slightly spiked up oh, no. to the side, but she's, it's like dark blonde. Um, she looks like she's maybe in her 50s as you approach the bar and she okay. smiles at you warmly as you're walking up. She says, you wanted a mala, sweetie? I guess so. You guess so? Uh, be sure. Is it? Pulls out what looks like a champagne bottle. It's kind of a reddish hue. It looks pretty. It is. Watch it pour. She mm. pours it up. You see the bubbles and the coloration and the smell. It's all very potent okay. and kind of enticing. It's sort of like a spicy, looks, yeah. cinnamony it's kind magical. of. magical. Yeah. Slides it over to you and says, Wait. first one's on the house. Really? Wow, thank you. What? Um. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I'm just gonna go check on my friends. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, it, and then I'm gonna on. like walk over. I'm gonna, uh, so I'm walking over to Zadis, but I don't wanna like, like shock him that I'm there. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like casually like, like hoping that he sees me in the okay. general direction and then. Act natural. <laughs> yeah, cause you know, Lurksage is so good at that. <laughs> did, she, um, did the doctor abandon me? Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, throw, throw low. What? <laughs> Thurlo, Thurlo's whole attitude was, this is okay. Just gonna. You're an adult, Mala. You know what you're doing. <laughs> Thurlo, I, One of those is true. Look, it's not, girl code, though. You, there is, there is some mess oh, up yeah, girl true, true. code happening right now. Wait, but, no, when you asked me, did the doctor abandon me? Are you saying, did she just leave did the area? Did she leave? Like, just say, see the doctor. Girl. The doctor I mean, was in like the project. She did not see the doctor. I didn't see the doctor. Sorry, I thought you were, I, I thought you were asking if, if Thurla was watching from afar still. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Girl, oh. she's still watching from afar. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is the answer still no? You're going to have to roll the dice for to figure something like that. Oh, okay. You don't know she's there. You're unconscious. Andorians don't conscious. have a girl code. It's, uh, it's lore now. Yeah, oh. yeah, there it is. Yeah. Hey, we were just having a discussion over here on this side of the table because y'all made some good points about girl code. Eliza brought it up. It's like, but girl code though, like <laughs> yeah. what WTF? How are you gonna bail on your friend? And then, and then I said, well, I, ideally though, wouldn't in an idyllic like utopian future of Star Trek, a couple hundred years from now, gotten to a point where we won't necessarily need girl code anymore? Do you know what I'm saying? We're like, it's not as common and shitty as it is today. <laughs> uh, Klingons may not be as woke as us. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good that's point. That's the thing. That's yeah. a good point. But go. isn't because yeah, y'all don't know I found that. Is. Isn't Starfleet's whole thing though? Like we're just gonna assume everyone is as woke as us. That's <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Isn't that's that they, their whole thing? That's why they keep getting into wars. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it could be that so the Andorian cool. doctor knows that she could eviscerate anybody that she wanted to if she decided to go full Andorian on somebody and was Fact. like, you know what? Um, okay. <laughs> fun, um, fun things to yeah, think about. Good. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so. so I'm gonna start heading towards uh, the two of them. Okay. You in approach. a very awkwardly casual way. That are, you, I'm, are you approaching 
from Lynn's angle right. or I'm from trying Mala's to, he's angle? He's looking up at the stars, and I'm like kind okay, of like... Okay, so probably from Mala's angle, I'm then. trying coming to around not, the couch? Yeah, I'm trying okay. to not like scare him, but at the same time, like I want him to notice that I'm there, but not like in a... Yeah. Right, right, okay. Um, yeah, you don't scare him. You okay. you approach, and as you come up in the window, he just kind of glances up and says, Hey. Hey, is she, is she okay? She's really drunk. Oh my gosh, what was she drinking? <laughs> and that's when I take my first sip. Okay. You take your first sip, and... Mm. Oh, that's, that's, that's some potent stuff. Yeah. Um, oh my uh, gosh, the bubbles, it's like cream soda. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> this is really Oh fun. boy. It'll make you feel like you're playing. Um, oh my god. Uh, so when you ask him that, he's like, I, I actually don't know. What you was drinking? <laughs> she, she mentioned it, but I didn't actually catch it. I, or at least I think she mentioned it. Would you like some? Um, yeah, all right. I'll, oh my god. He just. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be the best day ever. <laughs> oh my god. He, he smirks and he's like, Long night. Uh, as he takes it before he sips it, he's like, It's really good to see you. I'm really so worried. good to see you too. I'm sorry that I didn't find you sooner. No, it's okay. There's so much I have to tell you. Um, uh, I need you to make a fitness. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. This is gonna be the your fitness. It was the bartender, no security, right? <laughs> the bartender didn't your tell her to staff? drink it all at yeah. once. Like, Mala was told yeah, to drink Mala it all told, at once. Yeah, I was yeah, told to shoot it. Lark Sage was not told to shoot it. I'm a right. sipper. So, so did you only take one sip? Um, yeah, I just took, yeah. I took, I mean, it was a, mm-hmm. a yeah, big sip. Okay. Was, yeah, hopefully y'all don't get as trashed as me. We're splitting one, so hopefully between the two of us, we can hold it, hold it okay. down. I'm gonna say, yeah, uh, this is a fitness please. security check. <laughs> fitness security? Yeah. <laughs> Piece of cake. And difficulty is one. Wait, I rolled two dice, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I What's wrong with me? You're like about a week, buddy. Oh How much are you right now? <laughs> Sorry, I've been playing too much D&D. Like, we'll see you tomorrow. You can never play too much D&D. Oh, okay. I got one success. Okay. There we go. Is um, that good? You feel a tingling sensation in the back of your throat, and yeah. this stuff, it's not its not like, this stuff, it, it, the concoction of this champagne is insidious, because it's okay. not masking its alcohol content right. by its sweetness. It's just so perfectly designed that it tastes fantastic. And then you realize, oh, oh this is going to get my ass drunk if I drink too much of this. Like, you can also, feel that. Oh, I don't see it doesn't really do the drunk Don't forget thing. about mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. dope smoke monster it turns you into. Yeah. Um, I'm smoking? Essentially what happens is after you after you sip it a little bit, you feel this explosion of flavor in your mouth. Yeah. And as it's going down the back of your throat and you feel that cling, like it's like, bing, like the edge of being buzzed just from that one sip, Whoa. you, and this smoke just blows out of your mouth and your nose. And this is cool. Zadis pulls his lips away from the glass just as he sees <laughs> this happen and just goes, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Okay. That's, I mean, it's good, but whoa. Um, yeah. Whoa. Was she drinking this? I, I don't know. Okay, because this kind of makes sense now. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's her glass, and she points. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, you see a little bit at the bottom, sort of still settled there. Uh, I mean, do you need help getting her back to the room, or? She, she should probably get some rest. I think yeah. she's kind of out. I, I can help you pick her up, or yeah, would you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They I still hold the glass though. Gently, gonna... okay, with yeah, one glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should have you roll for this. So you like gently picking mm-hmm. up Mala. I got. We got like one shoulder. Um, and uh, Zadis like slowly sits up, and yeah. the bullion just kind of moves around to the side and manages to get his huh? arm. Get. Hey. Uh, hey. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna get you back to your quarters. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. Get off. <laughs> his, your hand <laughs> was on the side of his face. He's like, "What? You want? You want down?" Oh, hey, hey, <laughs> hi. Hey. Um, you, he, you, <laughs> Mala kind of lets go of Zadis and just the weight. Like Gina here is is illustrating reaching out and touching your hand. Mala, however, just eh, just kind of you, yeah. Oh, just kind of like body oh, weight was, on top I, of you. I, yeah, I imagine I felt like into you. Yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna uh, take and another is, quick sip and then put it down because I think I'm done. Zadis just goes. You have, you have, that's me. That's what you're drinking. Do okay, you, uh, makes perfect sense now. Do you maybe, maybe you should? It sounds like maybe she's in good hands. Like I don't know. Uh, oh. Unless you want help. How long have I been asleep? About. I just got forty here. minutes. Oh. 
great. Yourself. I feel great now. I feel great. Hey, do you, do you want to take her back? Or? Uh, on, or, on, on, uh, where are we or, going? Or, you're, or, we're gonna take you back to your quarters. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys have quarters no, in the station? No, no. Do way. we? The no. captain's supposed to go. I'm I'll supposed, take her back to the ship. I'm supposed to go meet captain. Maybe you should meet the captain tomorrow. I'll no, let him know that it was an order. I'm gonna let you him order. know. It wasn't order. It wasn't order. Was <laughs> I'm gonna let the captain know that maybe you should meet him tomorrow. You have very warm hands. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, should I should guess I should take her back to the ship? It sounds like maybe she's expected. I don't think she should be expected anywhere like what this. What are you whispering about? You're doing so great. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take her back to the ship, but I would it's really Dallas. like to. Yeah, we're back. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Come you find guys, me. You guys, if you, if you, if you, if you, I could, I could go back. I, I could do that. If you want. No, no, no. I can take you back. No, this is your day off, and you just got. You just, it's okay. I'll, I'll I, go. I'll go now. You guys I, can. Stay. No, I'll. I'll find you later. We. We. There's lots to catch up on. I'll find you later. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Um, um. It was really good talking to you, Mala. I hope I'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna we'll come back, her right? Back. What's that? You'll come back. Yeah, no, I'm I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Uh before I leave, I'm gonna just be like, did you, did you get my message? I did, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk. Okay. Okay. Come on, Mala! Hey. Come on! <sighs> yeah. And then I'm just gonna put her arm around my shoulders and just walk her um, as gracefully as we are. You, you get about you didn't have to do that. You didn't um, have to leave. So Zada sits back down at the sofa and watches you guys leave. And as you're, and now I'm starting to feel buzzed too. Yeah, and I'm you getting, got a little bit. And as you're kind of, you're starting to realize your equilibrium remains so hot, but you're you're okay. Oh, you're was. just like, but as you're moving through and you're about to leave uh, the promenade, all of a sudden a uh, lady in a blue coat swoops <laughs> underneath her ar- her other arm, oh, and hey, you say, oh. "Good evening." Hey. hey. I think it's time for a little R and R. This is a, all my friends are here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we're moving. Uh, as Hello. we're walking, I'm just gonna be like Do casually, you like. like Zadis? Yeah. Zadis is nice, huh? Mm. He's nice. He's a very blue. He's very blue. Blue is a very good color. Yes, you're blue. I am blue. Oh, you're blue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's no. speed this along. And okay. <laughs> the doctor kind of takes the lead as Throlo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We should get Mala Rose. There should be a whole night of this. There oh, should be man. like. Yeah, it's about everyone to be. want some more of me. You the, guys, <laughs> I need to make a cream soda like this. But I, the glass is over there. You should. All right. You should. Make us one. See, this is what happens when like, we don't allow alcohol on the ship. <laughs> Like people go overboard. Yeah, when they, 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 they compensate they surely, for what yeah, they've been yeah. missing yeah. out on. Hey, really hey, I, I only crazy. had one. <laughs> I paced myself. I'm gonna call it the Mala Sage. <gasps> the Mala Sage. The mage. <gasps> mage. Oh, okay, the we're mage. not Ari. I don't um, know. <laughs> So we will cut back to okay. the conference room in the Sally Ride. Did you want to do a time jump, Hector? Were you thinking about doing? Sorry, uh, I like thought a like a bomb got continue? dropped on us right there at the end. We might want to mm-hmm. diffuse. So yeah, you, why don't we, we pick that up it. then? Because during yeah. this whole time elapse, all of this has been happening. But now, um, the words "Tolosh is dangerous" has literally just come out of your mouth, and a silence has fallen on the conference room as everyone has sort of learned to trust this Klingon. You get a reaction from the crew of. Stunned silence as they're looking at you for more, and that's where we begin. Yeah, well. you're you're gonna have to uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> smoke bombs. Uh, uh, okay, Darkwing Duck. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, you're gonna have to elaborate on that, please. We've observed some very suspicious movements. Uh, he's been funneling weaponry. He's been manipulating duty rosters. He's been staging secret meetings with senior staff. Uh, We have reason to believe that he might be staging some sort of uprising. Um, Two days ago, I would have told you certainly he was trying to overthrow the station for the sake of the Klingons, because the war was on. Now due to the ceasefire, I can't say, but he's clearly working to hide his movements from Cargan which, you know, 
in this business, I've learned not to jump to conclusions, but... Uh, it's good advice. Yeah. Secret meeting and weaponry usually doesn't end up uh, in a surprise birthday party. Well, Doctor, uh, Doctor, we might have some information that may help you and whatever group you were referring to just now. Uh, we have recently learned, and I don't know how deep your records go, but Tolosh is not Tolosh. Tolosh is a Klingon named Kolar of the Duras family. Duras? No? Nope. Of the... You're like, e not Duras. Duras. I'm like, I, won't I was like, I won't check my Duras notes. Family. I know exactly what yeah. family it is, and I'll I say it right now. I just pictured the dun, right dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm going to go murder this guy. It's a very I'll dramatic chip. It just happened. Tovak. 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 Right. Oh, the I K the A K the I K S Yakul yes. was yes. of the Duras house. Was a, was a yes. ship that was known to associate with the uh, Son of Tovak. Although, do you, do you tell me? Do you tell me that about the ship with the Duras? Handwriting is terrible. Tovak. I had Tovak. I had Tovak. It's, it's a difficult language. I understand. Tovak. Tovak. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander. He is a Kolar, son of Tovak, and. We have recently learned as well that I believe uh, he's hiding in a closet. Uh, <laughs> 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 Shit, uh, guys, he's here on the ship. We're gonna be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool. Yeah. Hey, no, I, okay. Okay. Uh, Would you like to play some Daba? Yeah. Um, that uh, he is indeed making moves against the commander's position on the station because the commander has recruited the Duras family, the very controversial. Duras family. Yes, I can see by the expression on your face, and I need say no more. Um, Tolosh has been attempting to get closer to the commander to take care of the problem, to fulfill a, uh, a need f for honor. So understanding his motivation and his intentions. Obviously the Federation can't get involved in any such disputes, but uh, if, if Tolash were to be successful, uh, is this something that would keep you all awake at night? I wouldn't consider it strategically disadvantageous to have someone other than Kargan be the commanding Klingon presence aboard the station. I don't know what your experience of General Cargan was. I was unimpressed. <laughs> to put it lightly. Commander Rue here actually uh, pulled a pretty impressive move um, and, uh, and bonded with uh, Tolosh himself. Commander, would you care to elaborate, please? Under request from Commander Tolosh, I undertook a blood oath of honesty with him. We exchanged information. It was productive. So suffice it to say, we have an ally in him. And as it stands right now, he has an ally in this ship and this crew. Which isn't to say that we as Federation officers would participate in the conclusion of any sort of blood feud between two Klingon families is an mm. internal matter. Uh, it's not at all the Federation way to, to tamper in things like that. They just have to play out naturally and organically. Yeah, Certainly. definitely. Wouldn't dream of it. We understand that. Right, yeah. Absolutely. directive and all, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, uh, Klingons are very proud um, and oftentimes hot-headed and if the opportunity were to present itself that Cargan were to find himself alone, Stranger things have been known to happen. So uh, I guess um, I'll, I'll make a note of the fact that uh, Tolosh may not be working against us after all. For all that Klingons are sometimes thought of as hot-headed, Tolosh might seek a dish served cold. Revenge. They're talking about revenge. <laughs> oh, thank you, Captain. It's your keen grasp of the subtle nuances of 21st century idioms, <laughs> Captain Martinez. No, I'm only 32, but, you know, <laughs> I've been around a little bit, but I've picked up some stuff. 
off in the distance. We hear a snort of approval. Uh, our comms are open. Dr. Curses! Uh, turn we it off. We're walking through the hallways with Dr. Rolo. Your sensors <laughs> detect a snort. Yeah. Uh, um, so the question, Lieutenant Commander, is what's the next step? Where do we go from here? What do you need from us? How vested of an interest do you have in Cargan's Day of Reckoning? Because I may be able to help facilitate that to a greater or lesser extent. Well, let's... In, in as much as a lovely scientist yeah, has access to movements and where someone may be and what their access codes might be. Well, let's, let's talk this out. Because Sally Ride has come across some of the most miraculous luck just in the past few days that I've... that I can recount in a very, very, very long time. Um, the IKS Yakul that we ran afoul is completely gone. Uh, was victim, fell victim to a gravimetric anomaly. But right? collapsing, collapsing pulsar. That's uh, exactly. very dangerous. And uh, even, <laughs> even with that, even with that loss of evidence, Tolosh was let in because of the, the what was it? I'm sorry, the, the blood oath of truth? Right. Um, and that's when Tolosh spilled the beans, as it were. It's a human expression, which means to reveal one's plans to a great extent. Uh, um, so that on top of getting back to the station and learning that there is now a ceasefire, that this could be the way that the Federation and the Empire moves back towards where it was before, the Kittimer Accords, the, the peace treaty between our groups, then I think that there is no better time to have some of these plans enacted than right now. Uh, I, I told you all before, I've, I've, been, I've been doing this a long time, and I've seen the pieces get moved up and down the board. I'll bet. At the end of the day, Duty aside, out there on the promenade, people are happy. Mm -hmm. They're sharing Rocktachino. They're drinking blood wine. <laughs> They're taking ill-advised shots of odd alien drinks. Um, and I would... That's a specific example. More than anything. <laughs> it's... You're one of your people was... You know what? Never mind. Don't yeah. worry about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, you worry that... I want the balance to be maintained. I understand. If, and right now it's... Balanced. If it can lean a little bit our direction, great. But this leaning could still put Federation lives in danger, not to mention even innocent Klingon lives as well on this station. This is going to happen some way or another. We should ensure that when the opportunity is taken, it doesn't endanger Federation lives to the greatest extent possible. Agreed. If that involves manipulating the situation such that the opportunity arises with least possibility of collateral damage, I think that is the best thing that we could do for the situation. So what can we do? Well, is this, this is isolating the general. Is this, is, what are we talking about here? Uh, if I can make a suggestion. Please. Um, you all probably haven't had any shore leave in a while. Maybe it's worth uh, a tour of the station to see the sights. Understood. That, uh, you know, um, there's a very beautiful observation deck uh, near the secured Klingon area. I'm sure if we asked nicely, they'd let us, they'd let us over there um, to see the sights. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, the collapsing pulsar, so to speak. The collapsing pulsar. I, I'm, I'm sure. Um, there's all sorts of information. That's that, a great bar name, by the way. <laughs> the the collapsing mm. is. We, yeah, trademark, TM. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll tell my old buddy Brug. Yeah. You know, he might want to might want to pass that along. Hang out at Sea Pulse, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I, I might I might be able to um, get you all an audience if that if that is something you desire. That sounds like an excellent idea. Um, twelve hours, less, more. Yeah, 12 hours. So in 12 hours, you're going to approach the Admiral? Is that In 12 hours, I'm going to take them... On a tour. To on a tour. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. 
Because right, um, it would be completely disrespectful and inappropriate to just barge into an <laughs> officer's... Keep the door in. Right, sure. Tarantino style. No, I, I've, um, I've kicked in my fair share of doors. It doesn't always work out well. Okay. You should kick hard. But we need 12 hours, so that's great. <laughs> so let's do a time jump then. Hey, oh, it's it's oh, um, wow. Commander, I, I realize you have a, a number of preparations to make, but if we could, we could speak at some time, I'd... It great. would be lovely to catch up with. Greatly appreciate it. Okay. Um, so as we cut back to the lower deck uh, on the officer's deck, Sally Ride, um, shh, the doors open and Sage, <laughs> you are with Lolo. You bring in, uh, you've got a, a slight buzz going. Yeah, I'm You're in okay. a happy place. You're I'm okay. A, I'm giggly. Yeah. Yeah. So but you were, but, but the, the giggle fits that this thing has given you is making you very aware of how intoxicated Mala must be right now. Yeah, she um, must be hurting. I'm feeling She must right. be a fleet of four sheets to the wind right now. Oh. Like, and as you bring Mala, you, Thorlo sets her down on, on her bed. <sighs> hey, Doc, I didn't, I didn't have very much, mm-hmm. but I think she did. Do oh, don't worry. like a little... Yes, she pulls out a hypo spray. <laughs> That should take care of any of the effects of a hangover. God, yeah. Hey. The future. Hey. <laughs> Welcome was, to Star Trek. That's what wow. I was worried about. The future. Synthol. Um, what did you just do to me? I laid you down in your bed. You're gonna be just fine. Thank you had you. a wonderful night tonight. Great. Let's do this every time. Let me just remove that bun so you can lay down. She pulls out this, oh. undoes the hair. Oh. You kind of immediately feel some relief on your scalp. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's been in there since. I don't. Who knows? Oh, when did I put that up there? <laughs> um, oh. And uh, throw those says, well. Uh, we gotta I make sure this gets back to. So long. Commander. Oh, takes the pen. Says, yes, I'll see to it. Um, I, I can get to my quarters fine, Doctor. I'm not too bad. Just a little. She kind of gives you that sort of amused, playful narrowing of the eyes. I just had two sips. Technically a sip and a half. Make sure to drink lots of water. Yes. Yes, doctor. And then she pivots and says, good night. And good night. walks out the door. The last thing you see is her blue coat flowing behind her as the shh. Are you going to be okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, where did the doctor go? She's gone. Oh. She went back to sick bay. Oh, don't say sick. Sorry. Mm. Can I get you, like, water or anything before I leave? No. I hope I didn't, like, interrupt anything. No, 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 um, just no. I was looking for Zadis and didn't, I saw you and I wanted I to make sure you were okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you, you, you really didn't have to do that. You could have stayed. You could have stayed. I, I know. No, it's. No, I wanted to make sure you were okay, because you... I'm fine. You're great. Um, you're great. Cool. Uh, I should probably go, but I had a really good time working on the uh, resonating particle dampener well, pulsar with you, and that was fun, right. and maybe we can do it again sometime when we're needing that or something. Do you want to do... do um... Do you want to just hang out for a second? Sure. Okay. Like, how? I don't know. Um. I just, like, sit down. <laughs> like, okay. don't know what to, I don't know, I don't hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like. Did you just sit on the floor? Yeah. <laughs> I sat on the bed. I sat on the edge of the bed. Oh, okay. Like, how do I, what? I what was going to wanna... come down and sit on the floor with you. What, yeah. what do you want to do? Um. I don't know. I've never really had anyone in my room before. I mean, I same. I've, I mean, I've. I mean, <laughs> there was this one time when <laughs> Jiv <laughs> was drunk, but he wasn't drunk, but he was drunk. You saw like, she was drunk. He was worse than you. On the ship? Well, no, maybe not. <laughs> I don't, I'm not drunk. No, you're fine. But it was so weird. You should have seen him. It was really sad, actually. So maybe it wasn't something to laugh about. But now that it's past, we can laugh about it. Why, why was Why was he sad? It was just a memory thing that happened to people, and he had a memory, and then was sad. Oh. And 
yeah. joke somehow. Anyway, yeah. uh, but you're not that bad. <laughs> the mm -hmm. him, you're good. Yeah. Okay, I should get you some water. This is really awkward. <laughs> Sage just does not know. This is not a hangouts. <clears throat> the buzz is kind of taking a little bit of the edge off. Are you going to yeah. go get her some water from the replicator? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Give her some Cold water. water. Yeah. Um. So what were you guys talking about? Huh? You and Zadis. Mm. Oh. Oh, literally just engine. Just the engine. We we're just oh. talking about, you know. Don't don't worry. It was just talking about oh, the engine. Why would I be worried? 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 Uh, what? Uh, uh. Uh, uh. This is okay. I know. You know what? I'm not. I will, never mind. No. Nothing. I say nothing. What? I'm not saying anything. Because I don't know, like, you guys look, you know, kind of cozy and stuff, so I didn't want to, like, you know. No. No, no, no. No, no it's, 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 it's not like that. It's not like that. I mean. No. He, okay. he, he likes somebody else. Oh. That's weird. He's never mentioned that. Oh my gosh, who? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so... Oh, I totally have to go talk to him. This is so weird. I'm gonna go talk to him. Not right now, that would be weird. But I'm, like, you, you, later. You, 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 I have to you, talk to him anyway. You, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. You should, you should definitely, you should definitely He told you who he liked? I'm not saying nothing. This is so weird. I thought he would tell me. We told each other everything. Some, sometimes you can't say the really important thing you want to say to the person that is the important one. Huh. That. Okay. <laughs> um, this is fun. They're just bouncing on the bed. <laughs> uh, um. Have you, have you, um, have you ever been in love before? No, not really. I've been on a coffee date once, but I didn't know it was a date. Back in Starfleet. Sorry, can't give us my face. <laughs> I still love that you walked up to Garrett Wang yep. at the Star Trek convention. It's canon now. I told him we had coffee with Instant ah. Kim. Garrett, um, so Bonnie walks up to, I'm sorry, I know I'm breaking the scene, <laughs> but Bonnie, I love that you're bringing, I love that Sage is bringing this up, because Bonnie totally just storms up to Garrett Wang <laughs> at the Star Trek convention and is like, my character in Star Trek Adventures had coffee with your character in Star Trek Adventures. <laughs> He and bless his heart, he was like, great, great. Yeah. Like, you want a picture? I was like, yeah. That was like the third time that happened to him that yeah. day. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, well, it was fine. It was fine. I only made a very uncomfortable. One of my favorite moments. It was pretty funny. I and I was in full uniform, too. Yeah. So I looked like nice. one of those crazy fangirls. Nice. Um, in any case, yeah. I, had I had coffee once. It was I mean, it didn't, and then, like, it didn't go well. There was, I don't know, there was guys who, like, asked me sometimes, but... I was just focused on school and um, That's smart. And my my dad can be a little my dad can be a little intimidating. So why did you just do that? He's not my real dad. He's my father, my adopted father. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm adopted. But yeah, what about you? He. I'm not adopted. No, no. Like, mm -hmm. have have you ever have you ever been like in love? Like, what's it like? I mean, I've had like I liked people before, but they, they would never like me back. Um. I, or like I thought people are kind of you know attractive or something stupid, sexy, sad. <clears throat> you notice Ma Ren's demeanor changes. Mm. She shrinks a little bit from you. Um. Um. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, was he cute? Yeah. He was great. What? Well, where is he now? Like, he's, can... he's dead. I'm 
sorry. Oh. Whew. Huh. I don't think I've said that out loud in a long time. Do you wanna talk about it? Oh. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> I've just had a lot to drink. I'm a little. Oh. And I just kind of like put my hands on her shoulders. I actually, I'm going to put her head on my shoulder just like how she was sleeping on Tadis. Okay. And just let her lay there for a little bit. I was like, it's okay. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Thanks. I don't talk about a lot of things either. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We were supposed to be married. It was gonna be a beautiful wedding. Bet you Lee would have looked really pretty. <laughs> Probably not. I don't own a brush, did you know that? I do hmm. now. <laughs> well, we could get you one. There's a it's that's easy. <laughs> I'm not very good with hair either. You have beautiful hair. I should get to Lawn to do it like she did yours. You was... really, you should. She's so good at that. Yeah. So good. Yeah, your hair looks really pretty. Um, I'm sorry. Not about your hair or your brush or. I know. Okay. Let me just sit there. Thanks for staying. You're welcome. This is. This is like friend stuff, huh? Yeah. Friend stuff. Cool. I think I'm I think I'm I think I'm I'm okay now. I think I'm gonna go to bed. Okay. Okay. I don't know what to um, do. <laughs> I'm just like Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just, just gonna lay down. You can go to sleep yeah. and I'm gonna Leave your room. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, you sh you should um you should definitely go go go. You should talk to him. To his, oh, to Zadis. Yeah. Yeah. I need to find out who he likes. That's so weird. There's gonna be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I just I leave. I, but before I do, I just kind of like give her another pet and be like, if you ever want to talk again. I'm, I'm a friend. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Good night. Good night. And then I'm gonna leave. But like, even though that was very like sad, Sage is really happy. <laughs> it's gonna leave. She has like a upbeat. real like yeah. It was okay. like she's never had like a sleepover moment. Gentle or... snores of Mala Ren is Not what bothers you about. <laughs> no. <laughs> the door shuts. <laughs> <laughs> I did not fall asleep. No. Oh, okay. Mala just sort of lays there. All right. So sad. The end. <laughs> that was so sad. Puppy um, dark. So we'll cut to the next morning as everyone's coming on shift. Uh, Sally Ride has got mostly a skeleton crew right now, uh, but there are still staff coming and going. There's an engineering staff that Jiv is heading up right now. Uh, he's seeing to the overhaul of Sally's warp core, which needs a lot of regeneration, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. Sally being winded and everything, uh, especially after that little combat that you guys had, has really kind of pushed the system's limits. So Jiv has elected to stay on board and coordinate the engineering teams. Plus he doesn't want anybody near the heartbeat Surprise. of the ship. Yeah. Chef wants to stay on the ship. Yeah. So lucky him. Um, mm -hmm. uh, your shit, your duty shift would normally about to start, uh, Captain. When you hear a chirping sound uh, coming in from Narendra Station on your personal communications. Cool. I just got out of the shower. I got no shirt on. Shh. Looks super buff. It's the Kirk. It's little the Kirk towel. Scene. Nice. Yeah. Little towel <laughs> on there. Is your? Uh, it's like. 
Yes, Whatever it's like high waisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> Starfleet pants, they're like right above the belly button. Yep. Okay. So like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Answer that. Yeah. Swag over to the that thing. Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren pants. Yeah. 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 Right. His hair's um, still wet. So you just see the Starfleet communications, and this, on the screen, you see Admiral Hebbard <laughs> staring at you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she comes up on the screen, and she just stares at you for a second and says, Am I catching you in the middle of something, Captain? No, just my normal morning routine, Admiral. How can I help? Well, I was contacting to let you know that after reviewing ship logs, that I am hereby ordering the crew of the Sadly Ride on a mandatory one week, sh- one week shore leave. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, as like, <sighs> while the engines get overhauled. Mm. From what I've seen, your crew has not received a break since before you left. This is true. Yes. For Narendra. Well, then you are ordered <laughs> to take some time off, Captain. I appreciate that, Admiral. Thank you. You'll be happy to know that uh, the station's hollow suites are coming online this afternoon. It's going to be a bit of a ceremony. You're free to attend, of course. There's already been a queue signed up for it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump your names to the top of the list if you'd like. I'm sorry, what did you, you do? You do mean line and not <laughs> <Yeah>. queues. <laughs> People are queuing up to... I think we all. Great. We're all like, like what? We're already <laughs> queuing up to join... It's about to be like, no. <laughs> oh, uh, some relaxation. Like, great, Spoiler great. alert, it's not a hollow this suite. Q just sends you places. You just yeah, sit, yeah, exactly. you sit <laughs> in a chair and Q annoys you for now. <laughs> it's very relaxing. That, they probably have that as some sort of a Starfleet training thing holodeck program, I bet. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, great, uh, Admiral. Yes, of course, I'll be there. Absolutely. I might not be there in uniform, but I'll be there. Trust me. Leave the uniform at home. Cool. Take your time. Enjoy your time off. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> oh, I love this Thank you, Admiral. <laughs> hey, girl. Uh, uh, we'll have to uh, catch up socially at some point soon so that we can um, just sort of check in with one another, I guess. It's probably a good idea. It would be good to inform you of exactly what's taking place here in Narendra and not have to do it in a formal capacity. That's what I said. once. <laughs> good. Very good, Captain. Well, enjoy your time off and let me know what schedule works best for you. I've got my hands full right now. Will do. All right. Thank you. Uh, Martinez out. Communication ends. I'm renaming this from Ship of Secrets to Ship of Ships. Yeah, right? Ship of so Ships. Into like that. everybody. <laughs> we you just all went a, a little romance. You guys Come see a beetle on. crawl across the floor. <gasps> oh my god. I'm gonna marry that beetle. On the beetle. <laughs> um, all right. Um, Hi. Have we met? <laughs> all right, I guess uh, I'm gonna go put on my favorite black jacket and uh, enjoy my day. Cut scene. Uh, mm-hmm. You kind of dressing up, getting comfortable. Yeah, it's oh, nice to put on the civvies again. Um, montage. Yeah. Need a montage. Dressing montage. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> gonna go get some breakfast. Uh, so you're French all toast. informed um, that the entire crew has been ordered to uh, shore leave. Um, the only person does not confirm is a Tellerite. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, everybody else, for the most part, station staff come on and begin to maintenance. It's all menial work. It's all popping open the consoles, getting inside, making sure the bioneural gel packs are still functioning at full capacity. It's stuff that engineers do on a regular basis while you are in service. Mm-hmm. But now that you're de- now that you're on order to shore leave, station engineering staff has come in and yeah. uh, making Jiv all the more. No, I'm gonna oversee this. <laughs> so um, I let Jiv know, like that's fine, uh, Lieutenant Commander. But um, when we, let's say, go out to dinner, I'm gonna pull you away when we're off duty, and then you're gonna come and have like social visits with us, and then you can get back to work and then the ship. Okay? I su- that's a compromise. Thank you. And I, yes. I see it, and I, I of course, am it gonna... is a compromise. Appreciate that. that you yeah, and and that. I acknowledge that you don't have to give me a compromise, Captain. Yes, I don't. So. I'm I'm incredibly irritated, but I'm grateful. Good, and I am less irritated and also very grateful. So okay, thank you. Back to work. Yes, sir. But we'll take it easy hours okay. from now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Walk out. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> You're like, man, that guy needs to unwind. Yes, he does. <laughs> but also, thank you for doing the work. <laughs> right. <laughs> His work keeps him young. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, stepping oh, off, yeah. Captain, as you yeah. as you beam um, over back over to Narendra Station, mm-hmm. um, the transporter room is in fact uh, windowed, 
So when you beam into the transporter room of New Ranger Station, you're able to see out into the docking areas where you can see the ships docked. And it's strange to see Sally with half of her lights off. But there she is looking quite restful. But you, even from here, you can see that scar on her back yeah. from when you guys got hit. I mean, you've seen the damage uh, through the visual consoles. But to see it firsthand... Um, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Um, and I just knowing... remember the lives we lost. And... Mm -hmm. and, and sort of reflect and think that it looks like the Sally Ride is trying to sleep and heal with half of the lights off and it's just yeah. like, okay get better kind of underlining Jiv is the doctor who refuses to leave the patient kind of thing mm -hmm. um, the only person that's really the, for the most part the, this, the crew is emptied off the ship um, Mala you are jolted awake from the chirping sound Ugh. and oh, custom, a Tellarite's voice going, are you on board? Oh. Hey, hey. Oh, sorry. Just so, woke up. <laughs> the sensation? Yes. What Frollo gave you <laughs> does in fact deaden the uh, the effects of the hangover, but the side effect of that is is there's some mild disorientation. Yeah. So it's almost like, it's it's think of it this way, it's almost like she injected you with hair of the dog. So as you wake uh, up, you're like, oh, oh, uh, what the hell? Um, I'm, f I'm f Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all oh coming my god. back. Are you talking to me? Back. You hear Jiv say on the communications. Not you, the four deities. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dude. Did you see me last night? No. Okay, good. I mean, I saw you in the bar. Oh god. No, okay, okay, where are you? I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. in main engineering. Oh, oh okay. Get, okay. Hey, well, I'm, I'm messaging. Oh, hold okay. up. Mala, calm down for a second. I'm, I'm contacting. How late am I? You're not late. There's no duty today. The Admiral ordered what? the entire crew on shore leave. You're not to report to engineering. But what about, but what about the overhaul? We have to do the overhaul. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. I don't get. Okay. Yep. If if I didn't have a headache, I'd be really mad at you right now. <clears throat> well, that's what you get for sleeping in. I was able to pull, curry favor with the captain and keep working. Yeah, but yeah. Order yeah. comes from the admiral. We're ordered to do shore leave. Yep. So get your sorry ass up and have some relaxation. Jiv out. Deep. <laughs> Just cuts off. Oh. Good morning to you too. <laughs> kind of glance around. <laughs> I have my shoe, car keys, wallet. <laughs> <laughs> um, to know, lock the ship. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Um, one of the things that's happened since Narendra has gotten in contact with Starfleet, no joke, has been mail. Mm. Mail is arriving at the station. Mm. Um, mail? Mail. Messages coming in from Starfleet. Oh, man. Things that are cycling through. You guys have been out of contact with oh, man. with your side of the quadrant yeah. for over a month. There's been no contact at all. The Klingon War, lots has happened. So you guys are receiving messages popping in from time to time. Um, nothing big. Uh, Lark, you do get a message from your parents asking you to contact and let you know you're safe. Yeah. Um, all this and other stuff. People also, I noticed, like... They seem very excited how this will look on my record, all of the things that's happened. Very likely that you're going to see some things of like how how um, they've been keeping tabs and they have been uh, they've been very impressed with how you've been performing Great. and what this is going to do for you as furthering your career as an officer. You'll make lieutenant in no time kind of yeah. like you are definitely getting um, you are definitely getting that. I don't respond. <laughs> OK. Um, Talon. You receive a message. <gasps> All right. Um, and you see it encoded as you're. Um, everyone's getting as you're all packing up and leaving the station or leaving to the. So you can stay on board the Sally Ride if you wish. You're ordered off duty. Um, so uh, if you're you, there are quarters being provided for you guys on the station. Um, so in the early morning hours, as people are leaving the Sally Ride, you receive communication that has been forwarded to your personal console in your quarters. <gasps> as it opens up. Uh, and you see it is from uh, Starbase 364. Oh. Oh. 
Yes. <laughs> Wait. It is coincidence that, that, that this is happening, and I did not know this was going to become the game of ships, but yeah, here. <clears throat> um, so, um, I know, Sam's like, you should know better. So, uh, it, as you authorize, as you authorize the message, you see it loading, and uh, apparently this message was sent um, very, very recently, um, probably in the last 48 hours. Um, and as it pops up, you see the face of uh, Ambassador Rell uh, in his diplomatic uniform, um, pops up on the screen, and he goes, you see his sort of cheerful face, and he says, hello, Commander. <clears throat> Or is it more appropriate to say Lieutenant Commander? If I'm not mistaken, you're a commander, and it, but a junior grade, so it should be commander, I think. A lieutenant, yeah, I'm gonna go with apologies. I should probably study these things. Um, oh. Well, I, I received word that Sally Ride reached Starbase 364 safely. That was good news. Things have been pretty tense here ever since the war broke out. News of the ceasefire has been having everyone sort of relax, which is nice. Um, and I'm pleased to say that I've been chosen as a member of the Federation Diplomatic Corps to discuss turning this into a full peace treaty with the Klingons. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow for Konos. So, hopes are not particularly high. Klingons hate talk, but the Klingon diplomats are different, so I'm enthusiastic. We'll see. I hope you're well, Talon. I've put in this message designs from uh, that I've found <clears throat> in uh, one of the archives that I uh, was able to pull up last week. These are Bajoran interstellar craft that were used uh, back when uh, our friends on Terra or Earth were um, still uh, <laughs> building stone weapons. I'll bring it up here. You should have the data packet included in this message and you actually see off to the side there is some data packets that have been included and he's like if you study ships, you kind of love the early Bajoran crafts. It's pretty incredible. The way they use solar power to push their ships through space is pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, and some of these have only been uncovered recently because of the cultural inf information exchange with Bajor. So you might be one of the first people, actually you might be one of the first Vulcans to ever see this. That's exciting. Um, or I hope you find it stimulating. <laughs> he kind of leans into the message for a second. <laughs> says. I, um, I, I've thought about what you've said since we last spoke, and I continue to take life as it comes for me, focusing on the moment rather than what may or may not happen in the future, but uh, I confess that I do take solace in the fact that however that future manifests, I know you're in it somewhere. And... That's more than enough for me to be grateful. I hope you're well. Live long and prosper, Commander. Or Lieutenant Commander. <laughs> and he goes, Charming. Message ends. Um, I take the, so you said there was like a data packet attached to this message. Mm -hmm. um, so I download that. Downloads. Um, Hmm? It downloads successfully. Okay. It's onto a, um, I forget what those things are called. Onto a... Uh, like, an, like an isolinear chip or like yeah, a, a pad? Yeah, that. Okay. Isolinear chip. Okay. Um, and I just go straight to my lab. Okay. And I uh, input that uh, data packet into my three... We decided I could have a 3D, mm -hmm. basically holographic um, thing in my lab. Uh, so I, I load it into that and I... I push some buttons and program it so that it will create the Im the 3D holographic image. Um, as the image comes up, the computer goes and this sort of noise comes up as you see this holographic image of the ship. The noise of the computer coming online, you hear a yelp and then a th hard thudding sound underneath one of the desks. And then, oh! Oh! Oh, and you see Lieutenant Baker come up from underneath one of the <laughs> desks. Are you <laughs> all right? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I didn't know uh, you were in here. Were was... you sleeping under there? Uh, not on purpose. <laughs> you realize we have shore leave. Really? Yes. How long have I been asleep? I do not know. Did shore leave just start? Yes, this morning. I thought you were going to tell me I slept through it. <laughs> No, you did not. Great. Um, she starts scooping up all these data pads into her arms. She's like, that's great news. I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, what were you working on? 
Oh, um, I find going over past research relaxing, and I proofread it. She holds it up. I correct spelling mistakes. And I, I don't like it when the computer does it for me. I, I understand I, that. <clears throat> um, is that an early historical Bajoran spacecraft? And she just kind of... They were some of the earliest star charters in the Alpha Quadrant. They... The, the things the early Bajorans were doing, it's much like the Pacific Island culture on Earth. They were navigators before anybody knew really how to navigate. It's pretty incredible. Yes, very inspiring, one would say. Lieutenant Baker. Yes, ma'am. I have a personal question. Really? And she sets down the pads. She's like, um, yes, what can I do? I am not very well versed in romantic relationships. Uh, let us say that someone sent you a message that for you and for them, you understand to be romantic in nature. How do you respond if you would like to return that sentiment? I mean, I... Hmm. This... Yes. This is a romantic message. They sent you ships? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, they know you, don't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's... Are they... Are they attractive? They're, are they pretty... What? Are, what? They, you know, are they attractive? Are they... Is it like Talon actually does blush? <laughs> oh, no. You see, you That's see. Uh, it takes it takes Baker for a second. And goes, oh, I mean, not, not, it's none of my business. Um, so. Yes, um, um, excuse me. I am sorry for that outburst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, you see, you see, Dorothy. She just kind of goes. Oh, I don't know what you mean. Um, um, that was embarrassing. Uh, yes, I, I find this person attractive and. I, I am outside of my depths. I do not know how to return the sentiment. Oh, well, um, I mean, uh, my first impulse is to ask you, and I mean no offense, but how do you feel about this person? Is that, I mean, is that possible? I mean, I'm sure it's possible. Obviously, there's a discipline in place that keeps you from doing that, so I'm just... Is there anything on the other side of that discipline, maybe? That's, if there's a... Is this offensive? I'm so sorry. I don't know Vulcan culture that well. I stare at the stars. I, I, I don't... I think by broaching a personal matter with you, this question is not offensive to me. Oh, okay. Um, I, uh... I can approach it from a scientific angle. Yes, that... That is, would be helpful. Is this person someone you would feel would be appropriate to create healthy young with? Yes, if they could withstand the pond farm process. Excuse me, I am being very, very open with you. You must, I must apologize, I, I'm not sure why. Uh, we're, we're just talking science. Yes, scientifically. Scientifically, well then that's great. It, it, then it, scientifically okay. speaking, you, have found a potential mate, and um, and you want to know how to reciprocate, <laughs> so that they know. I mean, uh, I would find a way to say thank you for this, and she points at the ship, and maybe. Um, you know what you should say. You what? see this sort of sly grin come across Dorothy's face. Just, just be like, um. Send them something, you know, nice that they might like back, and then encourage them to keep talking to you. Yes. Like, make it kind of, uh, like, say something like, I look forward to your next message. <gasps> yes. Do something like that. Okay. Thank you. Is it somebody on the ship? What? Is it somebody on the ship? No. <laughs> Okay. Shut that down immediately. Well, then that, that makes it even easier to concentrate on your work. 
I would be able to concentrate on my work regardless. I wish I could have. Back at the academy, there was this... Anyway. <laughs> do you want to... <laughs> do you want to tell me about this? You know, eventually, yes. I think so. I think... But right now, as much as I love the sensor suite on this ship, I really think I'm going to check out... I think I might sign up for the Hollow Suite, which is which is supposed to come online sometime this week or next week, I think. How long is our shore leave? One week. Oh, God, I hope it's this week. She takes her <laughs> pads and says, um, well, if you need me, of course, I'm ready and anytime you want to... Science. Yes. As they say. Thank you, Lieutenant Baker. Thank and you. And I apologize again for my outbursts. No, no, It will not um, happen again. Uh, if I can be honest with you, Lieutenant Commander, as an emotional being, I find it comforting to be around that kind of thing. So, no apology necessary. I, I just hope that you weren't offended by how comforted I was by it, because it was emotional. If that makes sense. I Thank think you for I'm... your mistake. She kind of shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> this must be part of adjusting to working among emotional beings. Yeah. Thank you for this lesson. You're welcome. Um, very welcome, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how Mala does it. <laughs> and she, being Betazoid and all, she just kind of walks past you and... Um, uh, see you around on the station. Tell me about Enjoy it. Enjoy your time off, Commander. Enjoy your leave as well. Shh. She leaves. <sighs> and you just see the rotating image of this early Bajoran spacecraft and all of its primitive and fantastic beauty. I'm mesmerized by the golden curves of the sails, and I'm just looking deep into One it. One of my favorite ship designs that Star Trek has done is when Cisco and them flew yeah. that thing. Mm -hmm. So, so beautiful. Cool. Yeah. Super cool. Um, all right. Um, Man, that was too much. <laughs> you guys all right. <laughs> <Our man. laughs> yes, Between this and then Martina's getting out of the shower. I said and far out loud. <laughs> I know. This is the sexiest episode ever. Uh, so far. So, so far away, Dazrit's so looking far. through a telescope going, how did I not make it into this one? <laughs> <laughs> it. There's still so time. Far. There's still time. Dazrit's at yep. home watching Twitch. Just going, son of a Twitch. Son of a Twitch. Son of a Twitch. So that happened. Um, so now we are going to... Uh, I hope somebody's watching and they're like, what's Pond Far? And then they're like, yeah. look it up. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's intense. Yeah. It's I highly intense. advise you to skip the Voyager episode, however, that dealt with that. Yeah. That is a, I think it's a little... <laughs> every now and then, Trek does something that rides the line mm -hmm. and sometimes jumps right the fuck over it. Mm -hmm. Bless their hearts. Um, anyway. Okay. Um, so we will uh, jump now to um, people filing off of the Sally Ride. Um, uh, we have you, Forkin, also filing off the Sally, or, or we say you're off the Sally Ride and you're watching the crew file out. Um, their shore leave having been granted, uh, probably no coincidence, um, as you see um, moving a little quicker through the crowd than most people um, is uh, Commander, uh, Commander Brew, <laughs> um, approaching you. You see Forkin uh, waiting as a lot of the crew are carrying their duffel bags. It, it is a little, it is, it is kind of nice to see the crew kind of letting their hair down a little bit and relaxing for the first time. It's reminding everybody that they're not robots. And um, a lot of them as they break away to go find their quarters here in the station, um, they all pay deference to you, Commander, as they're walking away, especially the security officers are just like, Commander? They all nodding to you as they break off, and uh, you see Forkin. Um, I, I'm it, standing like right next to a door. Okay. <laughs> say, um, uh, Commander, do you have a moment? I'll follow you. Uh, it's just a fairly nondescript uh, conference room. It's uh, comfortable, but it could be anything in here. How many objects are in there? What? Three chairs, two tables, and one plant. How large are the tables? Uh, roughly the size of this one we're sitting at. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I've positioned the seat where you don't have your back to any, any doors or exits. Right. Very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, when you walk into the room, Rue, um, 
the moment you sort of slide towards one of the chairs, you glance up and notice that standing in the corner, you see the form of Dryden staring at him. Um, and uh, Dryden's saying nothing. And there's a moment... Um, his presence doesn't feel menacing. But there's there's a moment as you, you kind of glance up at him and for a split second, Rue, you kind of and you this is very obvious to you that sudden something something is happening to Rue just as they sit down mm-hmm. you kind of there's a split second where you glance up Rue and you see Rue standing on the other side of the room and it takes you a second to sort of blink it away and you look down and notice you're wearing a black section 31 uniform and then as you blink a few more times you're wearing your clothes again and Dryden's not there when you kind of shake it loose He's here, isn't he? Don't fight it. Don't fight it. He's here. How do you know about that? It's my job to know things. But this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Because bipeds don't understand. Tell me about it. You're fighting Dryden. He's fighting me. What does he want? He wants to stuff himself back into whatever invisibility hole he came from when Serembasal and the person Dryden worked with conspired to hide them away. He wants to be forgotten? He thinks I'll go mad if he doesn't. (sighs) It's worse than I thought. (sighs) How old are you, Rue? Whoa. <laughs> I, Janiel, am 38. How old is Rue? To the best of my awareness, Rue is... Can I get an age on Dryden real quick? Um, Dryden hasn't given you a specific date, but you would put the symbiont somewhere in the age range of 80 years old. Attack another 42 on that. I can try and find out if you like. I mean, I, I, I know we come from the same place. Um, I mean, you feel Dryden next to you suddenly and says, tell him no. If he starts digging, Section 31 will catch our scent. He already knows about you. He already clearly knows more than he should by those rules. How could he know? Doesn't seem like he was in on it. Do you have a weapon on you? (laughs) Dryden looks dead serious. (laughs) And then it cuts back out again, that that moment of thought and... I slowly put both hands on the table in front of me (laughs) and continue the conversation. (laughs) Right. Say, um... I won't look unless you ask me to. I'm aware of Dryden because I'm aware of the movements of all of our people in Starfleet. And in his own way, Dryden was a hero. I don't know too much about him. He hasn't given me much access or there isn't much access left. Can he hear me now? Good. I love your references to early 20th century idioms. (laughs) I do. (laughs) <laughs> I'm an enthusiast <laughs> of such things. Uh, the other one I only learned as a Klingon proverb, but yeah. <laughs> so you're 80-ish, plus or minus 20 years, more or less? Again, to the best of my awareness, the first time I tried to ask him if there were any other hosts, he either didn't know or didn't tell me. We're going to have to pick this up after the break. Right. Because we're at 5.30. Oh, no. We'll come back to hell. Hold, hold that thought. <laughs> yeah, there's deep, deep. Hold that thought. I hate to cut you guys off in the middle, but we're at 5.30. I want to make sure everybody gets in. Some, 
Yeah. Sup. So okay. before we go, I have to just real quick remind everybody of the rules because we're about to do the we're about to stage the giveaway again. We're just going to read off the rules. You can of course do uh, stay active in chat at any time to uh, participate in the giveaway. No purchase necessary. No purchase necessary. Open to all legal residents of the United States, excluding yes. Rhode Island. Sorry, Rhode Island. Must be 18 year older to enter. Find official rules here. Those are being posted. Um, all anyone has to do to be considered is to be active in the chat window. And we'll put the winners up near the end of the show, and I'll be announcing it. And that is for two Temporal Agent starter packs on PC on Star Trek Online, and two Star Trek Adventures PDFs. PDFs. Is also nice. what we're giving away. Oh, yeah, yes. PDFs What's of the core books. What's you PDF can play. stand for? Portable document format. No. Thank you. Boom. And uh, we will see you back here in 10 minutes, everybody. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in. Um, um, a quick reminder, we're gonna be announcing the winners. Typically we would do it after the break in the old days. Right now we're gonna be announcing the winners following our new format. We're gonna be announcing the winners to our giveaway at the end of the episode. Uh, so we will No talk purchase to you necessary. Must be over 18 or old. Correct. Must be 18 or older. Sucks uh, to be your Rhode Island. Open to <laughs> everybody in the United States except for Rhode Island. You're neither um, a road nor an island, well, disgust. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> All right, Kooner, let's so do we're this. We're going to pick up right where we left off with Rue having an interesting conversation with Forkin in, in a room off to the side in the loading bay. A room without a few. Would be a good way to describe it. No witnesses. Mm-hmm. I'm aware. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Rue, I'm over 400 years old. You look great for your age. Well, I... I take good care of these things. Mm -hmm. I've been a father. I've been a mother. I've died a hero. I've drunk myself into an early grave. In the only way I can do this, that I can sit here is I don't fight any of it. You know, I... <laughs> how old are you, how old you say? 38, almost 39. My, uh, my last host w- was a lot like Dryden. Was a lot like you, honestly. She was a door kicker. Isen Kunert. I really loved being Isen. And every day she woke up, sure that there was going to be a, another chance to do whatever she wanted to do. She put off relationships, she put off education, she put off everything because all she cared about was kicking in the next door. And then she kicked in the wrong door. And honestly, I, I, of, of all the things, I, I, I don't quite remember all of it. I remember one of, one of my squad mates, um, he's a Tellerite guy, and, and I can't remember his name. He jumped in front of me, and I saw him torn to pieces. I saw every layer of him fall apart as he jumped on me in Izzin was torn apart. And even Kunert now is scarred. And I, I went unjoined for a very long time because I, I thought there's just, this whole thing is too painful. Because the trill we're lucky because it's it's a kind of immortality. You know, something of Juneel, something of Forkin, something of Izzin and Cast and Arch and all the others is, is going to live on forever. But it won't be us, you know? I found my immortality, honestly, so strange to say this, I had so much of my life is spent not telling the truth, honestly. But my immortality came with Cast and my babies. 
And I remember when my oldest was born, my little boy Sax. <laughs> and when they handed him to me, I just thought he was so warm and he was so perfect. And Cast got to have seven babies. Four of them joined, three chose not to. Sax chose not to. And they have children and grandchildren who have gone on, but, but everyone who was there, everyone who knew them, everyone who knew my little boy is gone. Except Coonert. I can't imagine how unbearable it would be to try and fight that. So whatever Dryden did, whatever he thinks you're better off not knowing, he's wrong. I hope he hears me, Dryden, you're wrong. <laughs> Embrace it, because it's who you are. It's who all of you are, and who you'll always be. The last will be. You know what happened to me, right? Wolf 359? I've heard. The only reason I can even see Dryden right now is because something in those nanites is inside Rue. I thought it was just in me, but the Symbiosis Commission will never allow a symbiont to join that's been infested with nanites. I'm... I'm the last Rue. This is the same commission that told you you were the first Rue. <laughs> well... It's not like I haven't thought a lot about it, and... We haven't always had a commission, have we? No. But... I don't know what that's going to do to me. I don't know what that might do to any Rue foolish enough to try to come after, but... Yeah. I might kick in the wrong door, or I might become... everything I've ever feared. I'm not wasting time. The work I do isn't wasting time. But I... I just want to know. Before I kick that door. I... need to find a Trill who can do the Jantara ritual. Find out who else is there. Talk to Dryden. Talk to him properly. See if he really was the first. Help. Please. It, uh, it took me a long time to even be willing to join again. It took me a lot longer to rejoin Starfleet. I'm still not ready to put on the uniform again, even though I'm doing the work. So maybe by helping you integrate, it will help me too. But I have a more temporal observation I've made, especially considering what we're discussing doing here in just a few short hours. I saw you light up when I mentioned the Klingon. What is that? <laughs> Everybody's getting it today from every uh. angle. Come on. I mean, I did title the episode Shore Leave, so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Stay. Ship of ships. Mm. The mountain not yet climbed, the, the ribs okay. not yet broken. Okay. Woo! 
Every warrior wants to prove themselves. I've been the wooer in the woo e. <laughs> uh, don't wait. It's later than you think. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a, an easy rationale for approaching our proud Klingon. You need to make sure he's who you think he is before we risk everything for him. Because I'm not risking everything for your crew. Lovely people though they are. Or I, no, we don't trust, I understand. I'm risking everything because you're my family. And there's so few of us scattered across such a big galaxy. And if you tell me this man is worth going into battle for, I'll believe it. But I'm not going into battle with this much unsaid. I'll be in communication when we're ready, when I've talked to him. And after you face the man in front of you, I'll help you face the man inside of you. Oh, put that on a fortune cookie. No. Janiel's family doesn't talk to me. I'm Borg filth. I fouled the symbiont I was trusted to keep, so it's... It's nice to have family. I've missed it. Well, you've got us now. The Hall of Sweet ceremony will probably be a good time. Eyes will be elsewhere if you want to scout a location. Oh, what an odd coincidence that there's a major spectacle that's going to distract half the station. That hadn't occurred to me. We'll play. I'm sure. We'll play. Hmm. Odd coincidence. Uh, Talk to you soon, Kinner. I'm going to go uh, act natural. Uh, and if you don't mind me saying, kapla. <laughs> I got it when I leave. This Most of the crew has filtered out by now, by the time <clears throat> you walk out of the room and the two of you part ways. Um... <clears throat> All of us, you mean? Um, no, you... I'll let you tell me where you were at. This was just a scene. Like, while your stuff was happening, this mm -hmm. is what was happening with Rue. <laughs> Got it. Okay. It's a multi-camera um, episode. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yep. the it's a fun thing about Star Trek Adventures is you really do get to, like, cut to character interaction like it. Like, it's an episode of Star Trek. And it kind of leans on that format, which I like. Um, so, uh... That having been said, um, as you move off to the crowd, is about the time one of the last people leaving the ship is actually Martinez um, stepping out. And, and of course, everyone also giving deference. Captain, like everyone. Um, there's a lot of affection coming off the crew, a lot of reserved affection as they're passing by. You did just lead them through hell. I feel and it. got them out the other side. You got so lucky. Yeah, you, you definitely are feeling uh, this sort of like uh, camaraderie as the crew is parting ways with you. Um, and you see the open promenade in front of you. The bar area looks pretty populated um, as people are are, uh, are sort of settling into tables and whatnot. The docking area is a good walk from the promenade, but it's kind of where the flow is going. Um, and everyone's kind of getting ready for this. Uh, the, the, the Hall of Suite ceremony is essentially going to be taking place inside the Hall of Suite, <laughs> where uh, a large number of people are gathering for um, what's going to probably be a big holographic party. Um, right. Yeah. The so, um, all the rims. <laughs> Martinez, you're kind of filtering in. And it yeah, is kind of in. nice as you're moving through. I would say, uh, Martinez, you might, you might note 
walking through that this is the first time you don't have somebody coming up to you to hand a report or asking you for advice or a life and death decision that's being handed to you or anything. It's, uh, I would say, Martinez, you're, you're starting to notice you're not on your bridge. We've been nonstop this yes. whole time. Nonstop. Nonstop. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's nice. It's actually kind of nice. So you uh, you move into the the bar area. Okay, great. I'll go um, ahead and do a quick uh, Captain Martinez to Commander Rue. Hi, sir. This is Rue. Commander, I'm uh, I'm attending the Hollow Sweet ceremony. Uh, my presence has been requested. I imagine a lot of eyes here on the station are probably going to be at the same ceremony. I also imagine that that might be a good time for yourself and uh, Doctor Cooner to, I don't know, maybe take a, a bit of a relaxing tour if you catch my drift. Understood, sir. I do so love to relax. Yes, <laughs> that you do. I I, look, I can't even keep this up. No, you don't. But uh, <laughs> I, think, I think you know. I think you're so up far from reality yeah. that I can't. Yeah, I, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> but you're picking up what I'm putting down. Um, so I will uh, report on this end if there's um, anything to report, and I'll. Keep you posted with my uh, location, and we'll rendezvous at a later point. Hi, sir. Martinez out. Okay. One rack to Gino, please. Thank you. Thank you um, very much. Yeah, yeah as you're ordering the rack to Gino. Um, Try the Paula Ren. <laughs> yeah. Under no circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not even on the menu anymore. The <laughs> next morning, they're like, we have to discontinue this drink. We should really. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you can take my legacy. <laughs> <laughs> You could probably just take it straight, because remember that stuff that Scotty was all messed up on in Picard's like, mm, yeah, smooth. Have you yeah. met the USS Sally Ride? We do not take anything straight. <laughs> hey, we're smooth. Um, <laughs> they're all about the texture. Um, <laughs> all about the texture. All, all about that texture, hey, you, y'all. You cannot regret what you don't remember. Fact. You uh, know. Martinez, as you're entering in the promenade area um, and passing, uh, you order your rock to Chino, and... Um, I'm going to leave this up to chance. So it's Roll a crowded it area. Mm-hmm. You're here for your drink. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make this a difficulty two roll. Okay. Okay. What am I rolling? Um, I want you to make a... Uh, let's, this is going to be... This is my, I'm going to say a control... As interesting as this... I'm going to say a control... Yeah, control security. Difficulty two? Difficulty two. Um, two successes. Two successes. Whew, barely did it. Tanya Moore is sitting <laughs> five tables away. Oh, yeah. great. Um, yeah. This is such a romantic episode. Is this the I Valentine's know. Day episode? I know. <laughs> yeah. Skip a couple weeks? Have we yeah. lost momentum from scenes switching oh, at all? Oh, Absolutely, yes. How cool. many? Uh, three. And okay. I'm pretty sure Got we it. lost an extra one for I wasn't keeping track of that, thank you. <laughs> I think Rue's gonna use a lot of momentum. Um, Tanya Moore <laughs> is sitting about uh, five tables away and is uh, by herself at a table looking at a pile of data pads. Mm. Um, and uh, has what looks like a, like essentially a coffee pot at their table that they're mm-hmm. constantly refilling a cup of coffee. And just to set the scene, when, when Kuner had set up that, that this uh, tour was gonna take place 12 hours after the meeting we had last night. Was you, last night midnight? Was last yeah, night? Yeah, it was pretty late. So I would say you probably got about an hour. So it's like 11 so. a.m. ish on this yeah, I would say the fake about time an, of the station. Yeah, it was pretty late last night. So I'd say it'd be about an hour before there's any kind of commencement ceremony. Okay. Um, um, otherwise, um, outside of, you, you do see Tanya, but you see outside the gathered area are uh, a couple of other figures that you've noticed walking around the station. You do spot Lynn Zadis in this crowd. Um, he seems to be in a conversation with another Andorian who looks like a civilian. Mm-hmm. Um, and you will also, with that role, I would say you also spot Brug, the, clean, the, the Ferengi merchant that is constantly making his presence known to everybody on the promenade. Okay. Um, and uh, that's, that's what you see around you. I'm going to walk towards uh, Tanya. Okay. So I'm heading towards her table. And then I bail at the last second, and then I'm going to head toward Lynn's Addis. I'm going to walk over to Lind. 
Uh, Zadis. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna see if she notices you. No, oh, oh. did she see? Did she see my bail? You gotta Riker into the chair though. You did know you, that. Yeah, right? Did you? Are you like arching your back a little I to show off the, the backside? Like, oh. Teenage <laughs> maneuver. I attempt to front flip into every chair. That what, <laughs> which is your good side, Martin? I'm gonna say she's pretty engrossed. Oh. It's a big crowd. She's yeah. not paying attention. Right. I'm gonna set the difficulty at two for her as well. Okay, great. Mm, oh crap! On. Use threat. Nope. <laughs> Doesn't notice you. Oh. You just walk around. Right oh, Set <laughs> so, phasers to attractive. That's <laughs> Does not notice you. I'm gonna head over to Lynn Zadis. Just kind of in the middle of the conversation mm -hmm. with the Sandorian, kind of glances over and goes, "Captain, it's good to see you. Hi. Uh, uh I'm sorry. I'll talk to you later. Please, and no, no, please, please, at ease. I just wanted to come over, uh, Lynn, and just say hello." So, oh, hello, sir. It's yeah. good. To, I'm really happy to see you, sir. I saw the Sally Ride dock, and happy to and see I you just too. you see his face drop suddenly as he turns and looks, and you start noticing a hush fall over the crowd. No. And outside the window, what is it? You, it, it, you, the sort of same sinking feeling and sh a shock and alarm, as you glancing out the window, and it's all the way on the other end of the promenade through the docking windows, but you see the unmistakable frame of the USS uh, Dauntless pulling into dock. And like you hear murmurs as it's, so Captain, the first thing that would occur to you, I would say go ahead and make a, um, I would say make a reason command check. Difficulty mm. is gonna be one. Okay. Mm. One success. <sighs> one success. There is no way the Dauntless travels across Klingon space two days after the ceasefire. So this thing has has been in the shit? Is that what you're saying? There's no way it, let me put it this way. Martinez is able to add, with your tactics and everything, you're at two tactics. days, Klingon Empire, it was ordered to leave weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It's just showing up now. Mm -hmm. What you know about Federation assets that have been kept aside on the station keep, the Dauntless never left Shackleton. Mm -hmm. And it pulling into dock right now. What is this? Is a loud declaration that this galaxy class starship never left Shackleton Ooh, as ordered. Okay, all right. Um, I want to look around. I want to pulling into dock. You see a couple of Klingons stiffen. Mm. The whole promenade starts to react. Is it starts to re? Everyone begins to realize. Everyone begins to realize what's happened. <clears throat> and you hear whispers and murmurs. A few Klingon officers shove past a few civilians and storm off mm -hmm. to who knows where. And Lynn goes, that's good, right? Uh, Possibly, yeah. And then chirp on your communication device. Captain Martinez, this is Admiral Ebert. Please report to my office immediately. Yeah. On my way, Admiral. Excuse me, Lynn, it was good to see you. Uh, it's good to see you, sir. Hopefully see you around. Yes, sir, hope to see you around. Okay, I put my rec to Gino down on the bar or Ding. whatever and walk out, but then I eye Tanya on the way out to see. <laughs> you eye Tanya? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna set difficulty at three this time. Yeah. What? Spend some threats. To see if, she, give you to see if she can see me? Yeah. Spend threats, spend threats, spend threats. Can we give you more? No, no, no. Wait, can we give you more? <laughs> don't worry. This, if it's um, not my shot, it's not my shot. You can spend momentum to lower the difficulty. Yeah. I yeah. think it's yes. going to be down. You guys, oh, what the fuck? Nope, sorry. Done. Two moments. Not now. Two moments to lower the difference. Two moments. One of us needs a happy ending. Sorry. What are you doing? The rest of me. Two. All the ships. The rest. The rest of us aren't interfering with the rest of any of your stories. Excuse me. Hashtag Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sending. All right. That's fair. I rolled two eights. Intoxicated. Yeah. You rolled two eights. Advantages were gained. I rolled two eights. All right. Um. So. This is what happens. Um. You glance at her and she's reading her pad and you keep walking towards the Admiral's office, leaving the promenade. And as you're walking away, she glances up and sees you leaving. Um, oh, so I don't see her see me. She doesn't, you don't see her see you. And she lowers her data pad and watches you walk away. So see that walk. She mm -hmm. hates to see you Two go, momentum. but she loves to well watch you leave. Right? Yeah, worth well it, spent. worth it. I'm sorry, Rue. Okay. Okay. We'll get you some momentum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just believe. Um, All right. So we'll cut to... Um, okay, sit down, sit down. Cut to you walking into the Admiral's office, okay. um, and you hear shouting inside. What kind of shouting? Klingon An shouting? Angry Klingon shouting. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, All right. um, I sort you of see steal the... myself up right before I walk in, like. And okay. then you hear, 
it reaches a pitch and then you hear a crash and you see the commander jump up and immediately grab a phaser from underneath the desk just as the door goes shh, and Cargan steps out and stops in front of you and says, move. I wait a beat and then I move without breaking eye contact because if you do that, that shit is disrespectful to a playground. So you he keep snarls that eye a little bit and kind of raises his chin and then storms past you. Um, as you glance into the office, you see the table has been completely overturned and smashed on the floor, and she's sitting behind her desk, the picture of calm. I'll see you now, Captain. Is this a bad time? I could come back after a desk is turned back over? No, I think it adds something to... I'll take it as a... I might actually leave it like this for I think a while. It consider, it's considered feng shui, I believe, yeah. So I come inside, feng shui. Sh the okay. doors close. Have a seat. By put now, the, put the uh, chair back and then sit okay. down. In it. She leans forward and says, oh, "I'm letting all my secrets out now, Captain. Secrets like what? I wanted to preserve the neutrality pact, but there's no way I'm leaving my station filled with Starfleet personnel un unprotected. Absolutely not. Unquestioned. I've had the Dauntless on station keeping. I ordered her back this morning. Yes, she certainly did. She was actually." ordered to take care of our situation at Cuvium Prime, but I never got confirmation from her. I wanted to head this off now before you asked why I didn't send a galaxy class to do an intro to do the work instead of Understood. an intrepid. It turns out they never received our message. And I've been doing some digging as to why, and we think maybe the Romulans are finally making a play in the Shackleton Expanse. But that's for tomorrow. You're still on shore leave. I will handle all this and tell you what you need to know when it comes up. But just know that Cargan is unhappy because the balance of power just shifted dramatically in our favor. Mm. Well, we are under no obligation to honor the previous arrangements now that there is a ceasefire. So I haven't done anything against the law or interstellar law. Mm -hmm. And Cargan knows it. So that's why he killed my desk. <laughs> Better your desk than something else. Yes, but I'm gonna go ahead and let everybody know to, even though I want everyone to relax, just to be aware that Cargan is a fool, Captain. He is an imbecilic commander. He should never have risen to the rank of general, and I have never met such an inept leader. I don't know how he achieved his rank, but there you have it. And I am certain that he will only follow the rules as they convenience him. I understand you've been talking to Forkin. Yes. He's a, he's a good man. He's been helping me here on Narendra keep the peace. It's good. He's got a lot of experience. I'm guessing he told you what you needed to know about Commander Tolosh. Yes. Good. He explained to me that it might not be as simple as we originally thought. Yes. I trust your judgment on this completely, Captain. He traveled with you. If he wanted to make a play, he's a Klingon. Well, I guess we just see what happens next. But I'm going to do everything I can to keep us out of it. And I think with the Dauntless back in the picture... Klingons will be a little less likely to try to make moves. Understood. What's keeping them here? The Klingons? Yeah. Orders from Galron himself. All right. He didn't want to abandon the station. Galron's... Galron's drunk with power right now, Captain, and it's Starfleet's belief that the Klingon that we once knew and helped install as a member of... Uh, thanks to the efforts of one Jean-Luc Picard, mm -hmm. thanks to him, we thought we installed what would be an ally for the Federation moving forward, but it's pretty clear that Chancellor Galron cares only about his office. Well, he's trying to save face now, I'm sure. That's a fair assessment, yeah. yes. So, have you been able to unwind otherwise? To? Uh, yeah, yes. And that's the plan, certainly, yeah. Will you be at the uh, Hollow Suite ceremony in about, I don't know, 30 minutes? That's the plan. OK. 
Okay. I want to proceed as if nothing has changed. I won't want the Klingons to think that this is us moving our queen in a position to take the king. Mm-hmm. I want this to be normal. It's just Make, a deterrent. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. We're all friends here. Mm-hmm. We just happen to have the largest ship in the sector now. Hey, you know, Romulans might be making moves, right? That's right. I think we can all agree that we don't like Romulans right now, so... Fun fact, I learned this weekend that a Duradex Romulan Warbird is the same size as a Star Destroyer. Oh, you didn't already know that? No. Yeah. I knew they were big, but I didn't realize... Actually, they're bigger than, a, than an Imperial Star Destroyer. Oh, uh, we all already yeah. knew that, right? I was scared. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was great. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Thanks for that. Sorry, Thanks what's better, a Star Destroyer? Oh, it's a, pe- it's a big metal piece of pizza in space. Let's say, I'm not aware of this... It has two de- huge, very obvious shield generators. I'm not aware of this kill. designation of a yeah. Federation uh, starship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Are you aware so, of this... Uh, <laughs> it's a ball it's with a ball on it. A That's weird. It's, 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 kind of, it's an astronomical right. mechanic. Um, if you zoom in, mechanic. you can see one. Um, yeah. right. 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 So, they can see it. it. So she leans uh, back in her chair no and just says, it's going to be strange to give you this order after everything that just happened, Captain, but honestly, I need you to just relax and enjoy your time off. I need Rafael Martinez to be completely fresh when he takes that captain's chair again. That I can appreciate. And I would ask that to please keep me updated on anything that changes, Admiral. The door shh opens and you see Captain Jonathan Ucap standing in the doorway. I stand up. Um, Captain, she rises and says, Admiral, Captain Martinez. Captain. Uh, Captain Ucab, as a quick reminder, he is a Filipino man, um, stands roughly about six feet tall, um, has uh, a very commanding air to him. I would say this is a younger version, uh, just the way the, his bearing and everything, just by the way he walks in, he has this kind of quiet authority. Uh, the best way I could describe him as an adjacent uh, is he kind of remind he would remind anybody who saw him otherwise in another universe as like a, a dama as he walks through the door. And he's a silver fox. We specified that last time. Yes, and he is a silver fox. He does have streaks of silver on the side oh, of his hair. Yeah. Um, I want to leave talking. on his ship because it will be the last one when all of this goes. Excuse me. But he, flying that ship. <laughs> he walks in the room and says, uh, are you ready for your debrief? And he says, I am, Admiral. I'm looking forward to telling you about what it was like sitting still for all those weeks. <laughs> And she says, Martinez, unless there's anything else. No, no, sir. Uh, I'll leave you both to it, and I will attempt to try to continue to relax. Thank you. Uh, hey, Raphael. He turns and looks at you and says, I'm going to get drinks later, catch up, say, exchange stories about captains, captain to captain. We ship in this too, huh? I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we ship it all. Oh, yeah. I've learned if I mention anything that doesn't have sleeves, and if it's an invitation anywhere. Bam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Martinez Actually, gets around. Yeah, we don't make the rules. It doesn't take much the, rules. Of <laughs> <laughs> the shipping rules. Well, Captain, I'm sorry. I have uh, evening plans, actually, but uh, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, some other time. Great. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. He didn't make plans for her yet. He's gone. And you hear you hear <laughs> UCAP as he takes a seat. He just goes, it's a nice desk, Admiral. <laughs> and <laughs> door closes. Uh, nice button. Um, as you're headed back to the promenade, um, Martinez, you step you step back into the promenade. We're getting much closer to the ceremony, and a larger crowd is gathered. But there's not as much excitement and activity around what's happening. Mm. You hear more murmurs. There's still Klingons here, and, but there's a different energy as you're walking in. Brug, however, is like you know trying to get everyone's attention to come to his shop. But as you walk in, um, she's still there at her table. How much time do I have? Well, like 10, 15 minutes? Um, I would say that whole thing probably but took about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Walking to the station, the Admiral's office, having the conversation, coming out. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and it looks like she's not aware that she ran out of coffee. Because mm. she's just holding it there, looking at a, a pad, and there's just drip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> drip. <laughs> and she's just looking oh, man. at man. Oh, man, I want to pull a real slick move. Do Is it. Is there anybody... Holding a tray with like a cup of coffee, walking by Spend me. Spin the momentum. Like, I'll let you there make it we true. go. There we go. Yeah. Spin the point of momentum. Yeah. I'll let you make it true. Let's do it. <laughs> Peter Parker, that. Last momentum. No, but if it's Peter Parker, then that cup will be empty. Yeah. And I'll, have, <laughs> I'll have ruined my shot. Um, okay, so what are you doing? So I'm looking around. I'm seeing that you at a coffee. I'm trying to see if there's a hot cup of uh, liquid somewhere. 
and then I'm gonna like, oops, excuse me, grab that off of a tray that mm -hmm. a the person's doing this, and then go and walk up right to the table and sit down and then go. Are you, are you out? Are you out of coffee? <laughs> oh my god. And she sets it down and says, thank you, yes. Sure. Of course. She takes it. She uh, slides the empty cup around. She's like, I, I really should be keeping track of how many cups I'm drinking, but I'm, I'm having to take care of crew manifests for civilian engineering departments that are coming in to help with the station. Now that we actually have access again. Well, that's good then. Yeah. Lots of volunteers willing to come across Klingon space. It's kind of heartening. Um, we'll see what happens. And she drops the pad and says, How are you? I'm good. How long are you uh, at the station for? Oh, probably another week or so, maybe two. Good. Not a lot of mining taking place right now. The gravitational eddies have been really playing havoc with some of our shield emitters. Yeah, we encountered something like that too. Oh, I bet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Our shield, our ships aren't outfitted to detect them until we're right up on top of them. Mm. We've had some bumps to say the least. But um, I hear you guys had something to do with a first contact mission. Word's gotten around the station. Yeah, that we did. That feels like a lifetime ago. But yes, we were able to help. Some Strethians, yeah. But, and they were nice? Lovely people. Sure, yeah. I've... Are, are civilians authorized to visit that planet? As far as I know, yes. I think so. I'll have to double check. I can, I can find out and get back to you. I don't know what the rules are in first contact, but if they are willing to open trade, that would mean good things for me. It, they seemed that they were receptive towards that, yes. Their technology is... Just breathtaking. It's really? incredible. Yeah. They're rich with resources and maybe a little too rich, but. Oh boy. Yeah. And how are you? She leans over the desk. Uh, I'm fine. Tanya, mm -hmm. it's great to see you. I saw you earlier, but had was called away to um to a meeting. I saw you leaving. Oh, okay. I figured you were probably doing captain stuff. I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um I'm on a uh, bit of a shore leave. Really? She, yeah. She leans back in the chair and says, wow, do you know what to do with yourself? No. I do. Well, kind of, well, you have my of. condolences on your shore leave, Captain. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do you have plans later this evening? Um, there's, there's a beat. She says, no. Are you sure? Because I'm here for a week. I might have to check my data pads. Okay. There might be one around here that has my schedule on it, and she starts shifting through it. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure I'm free. I'm like looking over to wherever I'm supposed to be with the ceremony thing, whatever, yeah, the, whatever the crowd is gathering. Essentially, yeah, it's just a gathering crowd on the promenade, okay. and there is um, an archway that leads into, think of it like, um, it's just another, uh, like, like a shop kind of going mm -hmm. in, except for inside are terminals where there's four doors, and you can see clearly into it. Um, and it's multiple hollow suites, great that are all um, online. And um, but the the hollow suite has not opened yet. But there is a crowd gathering. Everyone interested in finding out what they've selected. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Zadis is still here as well. He's over by the hollow suite. In fact, you would see Zadis. Um, talking again to that Andorian, mm -hmm. and you notice that Zadis has a toolkit open, and they have, looks like they've pulled one of the panels off of the wall near the hollow suite area, mm -hmm. and they're laughing and joking as they're rerouting power. That's good, man. It's good to see him laugh. That's yeah. great. She, she glances over at him and says, do you know him? Yes, he's a, uh, a former uh, member of my crew, actually. Oh, he he's been helping some. get us the power we need to activate That's the good. hall That's suites. Good. It's really good. Well, I didn't mean to take away from your work. I'm expected at a ceremony to go do a captain thing, but if if you're free later this evening, uh, then let's get dinner. But if you're I, not free, again, we can If you don't up. mind meeting me at, in the, the docking bay, I have to greet a bunch of the civilian engineers that are coming off, and then if you're cool with meeting me there, then we can just leave straight to wherever. Cool, all right, cool. Yes, absolutely. Well, then, great. We'll, I'll see you there. See you there. It's a date. Yeah. See you there. Okay. Great. Okay. Bye, Tanya. Bye. Where's Amy? Get up. I'm your stunting. You get up. Head over. I'm your CGI, Amy. Uh, 
And she sips her coffee. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and then I'll head back over to the ceremony thing, to the hollow suite. Um, who is attending this ceremony? Who wants to be there? Yeah. I went Sorry. to go okay. look. I was going to go Player look for Zadis. Options. You're going to visit Zadis? Zadis is going to be here. Right. You would know. Yeah, sure. mm-hmm. but I did make a pit stop into the store. At Brugs? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Okay. Since this is a distraction, I assume yeah. I'm very much not there. Yeah, uh, so what we'll do is we'll do this, and then we'll do... Yeah. You guys, uh, uh, we're gonna do you next, and then, uh, yeah, and then we'll just go from there. Yeah. You look very concerned. No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm enjoying the ride. Right now. <laughs> Actually, I take that. We back. always enjoy we, we the ride. We don't necessarily have to play it out, but I definitely want to be seen there, being loud, mm. so that people have Alibi. a memory that I was there. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. sort of <laughs> alibis. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my I too oh, yeah. am interested in holographic oh, wow. technology. Yeah. My, what a strange thing that space is, isn't it? Right. <laughs> what is going on Fast with that? Fast and lovely. I'm a doctor. Goodbye. Right. Goodbye. Walk away. Um, pulsars. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm seeing pulsars. Yes. Have I um, mentioned I'm an enthusiast? <laughs> <laughs> Very passionate about collapsing pulsars. Um, okay, so. <clears throat> So who's first? So we want to do, you're, you're arriving at the ceremony first? Sure. Uh, okay. Before I go see Zadis, though, I find Mala. And I have a little gift bag for her. Um, so you would probably find Mala. Are you, have you left the Sally ride yet? Uh, yeah, I, I, we're going to say this about an hour after you were woken up. Then I, okay, so I definitely spent a so. very long time like making mm-hmm. myself look presentable okay. so that I could go apologize to all who needs that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I.e. the captain. So sorry, captain. Oh my god. Captain. So then we'll do this. Sorry, we'll captain. say, we'll also, say as me, as you are, <laughs> as Mala is leaving the Sally ride, you're mm-hmm. kind of by yourself because everyone's yeah. left the Sally ride at this it's point. It's really nice. But at, a, at about that point, when you're just kind of looking around as you step onto the promenade, um, you see Lark is actually walking straight towards you um, from huh. about 200 feet away. Just kind of, you spot Mala leaving the docking area. You're like, ah. Uh, you yeah. were coming to the Sally ride to meet her. Yeah, I figured she And then she you catch her yet. leaving. I figured she might have slept in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, probably slept in a little bit. Oh. All right, so you guys approach each other. I uh, get just really fast. Hey, hey, hi. Oh, sorry, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, are you feeling okay? Yes, I imagine I can thank the doctor later for my lack of excruciating headache and just mild one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she gave you one of those little... Ch- oh, yeah, no. Hyper sprays. I, I, um, I, I do, look, I do remember. I just wanted to say everything you, you said, like, it it's safe with me, I... I won't tell anyone. <sighs> Relaxation <laughs> over the whole body. Mm. Um, oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, uh, and uh, did this is because you know, like I guess we're friends now and stuff. So I figured you might want need one or something. You really, 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 really did not have to do this. I know, <laughs> but it was just something I thought of, and it was it's there and. Yeah. I don't know, because I, I when I missed Zadis's birthday with him, you know, being not dead, and then now, I don't know. I just feel like now, whenever I see something that I feel someone would want, I get it now. I guess. And bye. Oh, oh, okay. I just I'm gonna go. Okay. I just I don't know how to do the friends thing. That was me, not Sage. She didn't say that out loud. Uh, Sage does oh. <laughs> not know how to do the Fred thing. Okay, just um, thank you for for all of it. <laughs> and inside is a beautiful decorated hairbrush. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> um. I, 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 okay. Watch a YouTube tutorial. Jeffrey's <laughs> too. I, I, Jeffrey's too. Run back to my quarters to try it out. You pivot Aww. and an yeah. engineer who's worked on the warp core of the yeah. intrepid class starship, and you <laughs> dash back to your quarters because you got a brush, and you're like, "I'm gonna use this thing." Um, you pass by. Uh, you literally, as you're getting off the turbo lift, and, and uh, you beam on board. And uh, as you leave the transporter pad, the door opens, and you storm past Jiv. It goes, "Whoa, hey!" And I'll be back! I got a brush! 
<laughs> okay. And you run back to your quarters. Um, all right. Um, then let's jump to Rue, and then we'll come back to, to Lark. Um, General query to make sure I'm fully understanding this. The Hollow Suite is primarily a Federation event? Uh, it's not being built that way. It's being built come one, come all kind of thing. And it's it looks like your your interpretation, I mean, it seems pretty obvious that this is sort of like a balm that's being applied to an agitated station, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's definitely a Federation controlled hollow suite, but all are invited to come and join the festivities, to um, unwind. Um, Klingons from the lower decks are being invited up. Everyone can show up. So there are people coming to this. It, it, it seems like it's an event that's sort of trying to make nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to find Tolosh. Okay, you computer. Mm -hmm. What is the location of Commander Tolosh? Um, uh, Commander Tolosh is in main engineering. On the station. Very well. All right, you head down into the lower, the belly of Narendra Station. Um, you go down many, many decks until you finally reach the core of the station. When it, when the door opens, um, the first thing you notice the moment the door opens is it's much darker down here, which isn't a big surprise considering Klingons like it dark. Um, and when the door opens, you do see a few civilian personnel that are look like they're from the Federation, not necessarily wearing Federation uniforms, but most of the people down here look Klingon and are Klingon. And uh, you see a core in several segments lining the wall. It almost looks like multiple cores that are kind of lining the side of the wall, a fragmented warp core, so to speak, that kind of bends around the station. And instead of being vertical, it's horizontal and it's segmented off in this giant, beautiful circle that's just <laughs> pulsing with energy, giving power to the entire station. Um, it is a large, empty column. Like, in the center of the room, um, it's hollowed out. It's probably about 100 feet across. And approaching it, it's a good 400-foot drop down to the further areas of the core. And you see force fields and whatnot in place. Um, standing near one of the railings, you see a Klingon... A younger Klingon, uh, not dressed in the armor of a warrior, dressed in like a robed uniform of some kind. It looks very formalized. It doesn't look like necessarily a, a, like a like a Klingon ceremonial robe, but it looks like a civilian's clothing. It's wrapped around, but it's got pads on the shoulders um, and utility kits all on his side. And he's looking up at Commander Tolosh, who's sitting there talking to him. Um, eyes turn to you as you enter. Um, Specifically, you're very easy to spot because you still have not <laughs> you, you still have these slight lines of blue glows that are coming out of your crotches. I know. That you have not <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so <laughs> these these uh, these the mysterious modifications that have been made to your crutches. And as you enter, they're literally like small glow sticks. Walking in, Klingons kind of glance at you. Um, including Tolosh, who glances up, as well as uh, the Klingon he's talking to, but Tolosh pivots and faces you uh, as you approach him. Commander. Commander, may I introduce to you Lieutenant Olak, Chief Engineer of the station? It's an honor. Uh, Olak nods and says, Commander, well, perhaps more later then. And Tolosh nods to him, and Olak nods and goes back to an engineering station uh, not too far away along the wall, giving some orders to more engineers. And Tolosh looks down at you and says, What brings you down into the belly of Narendra, Commander? I could ask you the same thing. I didn't take you for an engineer. I am a commander, and this is the engineer of the station. I'm a commander. Don't spend as much time in main engineering, although I imagine there are circumstances sometimes. There's that tone again. I have a tone. The same tone you approached me with when you walked into my cell. Like you know something? 
Perhaps this time I would like to know something, but no, I'm not... I'm not much for engineering. It gives me academy flashbacks. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to accompany me back up. I'm not known for my kindness. I will join you. Again, I appreciate your indulgence. Hmm. And you and him move towards the turbo lift again. He steps inside and shh, the door closes and he says, Now, where are we going? Rather than where we're going, I need to know where you're going. Ah. So that's what this was about then. I assume that's what that was about. Yes. Is he? <sighs> Orlok is an interesting case. He is one of the younger sons of a member of the High Council. I have to move very carefully with him. Whatever he sees will make it back to the Council. I've been very careful as to what I speak to him about. But he is also no friend of Cargan. It's not much to see that Cargan is a damn fool. Who needs to die? But when? But when? He nods. And where? First, I need to make sure that I have the resources to do this. It's what more do you need? Is the Federation willing to get involved? He folds his arms and looks at you. I'm on shore leave. You see this grin stretch across his face, um, giving him something of a wicked countenance underneath the those long pulls of his mustache, and he nods and says, I hear the Dauntless arrived. I imagine that could make many Klingons in this station a little excitable. Yes. More than anything. More than anything, Commander. I need evidence that he is in league with the Duros and the Romulans. That would be the killing blow. Then he would be mine to take. What more do you need than what my ship can provide from our logs? You have contact with Starfleet now? We do. Has the been anyone on board your ship that knows anything about dealings with Klingons, or has there been any information about secret deals with Klingon contacts, any sort of information? I know someone who could be helpful in that arena, perhaps, yes. Let me know what they say. We can do this without evidence, but it gets dangerous for your people. If I can uncover his complicity with the Romulans, then the station will not rise up to defend Cargan. I appreciate your prudence. I also imagine that the High Council would look on things much better if it were cut and dried. Yes. There is nothing in our laws that say I can't kill Cargan. But if I do it without proper justification, I will be another assassin. And I will not stain my family honor any further than Cargan has stained it. So this is the right of vengeance? Yes. Do you need a chadich? If things go south, as you would say, I'll be your second, if you need it. Why would you do this? I enjoy mountain climbing. <laughs> he is head cocks to the side. He reaches over and ding, 
stops the turbo lift. <gasps> Someone hold my hand. Hold it. And he leans in, Janiel, and just goes, and takes a big, you can smell his musk as he leans in close to you. I hit him. Okay, <gasps> you deck him across the face. You hit him hard. Um, he rolls back with it, yeah. and you see a little bit of blood trickle Jesus out of the Christ. corner of his mouth, and... Good, that was one. You said I get two. I hit him again for knockdown. Bam! All right. <gasps> he takes the knockdown. Oh my God. He goes slamming back against the turbo lift and kind of sinks down to the floor, and puts his hand against the side of the wall, and he's got this grin on his face, the blood in between his lips, and he rises again and says, my turn. That was so hot. <laughs> that was so hot. And, and you're going, to oh, going, what am I gonna find with this with turbo lift up? <laughs> you're going to pan away. I want this like, turbo lift. I need to take a different turbo I want like lift. an old lady with a poodle to be the one that's like, <laughs> Bing. Oh my! Uh, like we're detecting tremors on the Ranger yeah. yeah. Station. Yeah. Why um, is your dish working? Oh. Oh. Like, the camera wow. pans to like wow. the curtains blowing in the window. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the window shattering. Yeah. <laughs> my heart is it explodes. Oh my! Yeah. That is the best thing ever. Um. Oh. Well. Well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> all, right. all right. That's the end of the episode. So, <laughs> let's go. So there that was. Um, I think we all need a cigarette after this episode. Um, I don't even smoke. And don't I need smoke. A cigarette. Smoking is bad. Is everyone blushing? Metaphorical. <laughs> I am like. Only I have to get my my. Your nose from all around champagne. My my. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, indeed. So uh, more. Uh, more scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gonna calm down, next? Chief. Gonna calm, we gotta calm it down now. <laughs> Give me some all over here. I need a drink. Um, okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna cut back up to the promenade. This is just like uh, the 60s show. This is just like the original series. This yeah. Is yeah. yeah. No. It's true. Yeah. Complete yeah. with slapping before kissing. And everyone's short leave with those like yeah. weird mini skirts. Like, yeah. Even yeah. Martinez and everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we'll cut back up to the uh, promenade. Where, uh, Lark, you're arriving on the scene, and mm. you, of course, do see huge crowds gathered. Um, you, at this point, will notice the USS Dauntless and Dock as you're walking past the windows. Um, a lot of, there's an energy in the room, but let me just say that it's a low den now. It's yeah. not the, the loud conversation that's happening. There are still Klingons here, but I wouldn't say there's a tense energy, but there's agitation in the air. It's not tense necessarily, but you do hear people kind of you hear angry conversation right. as you walk in, not as much excitement. Um, and you, um, I would say it's it's pretty easy to spot Zadis. He's, he's at the head of the line right. with a small group of engineers that have pulled the, the thing off. And they look, they're just kind of engaged in quiet conversation. And Zadis will every now and then look back at the Dauntless. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's our scene right now as you approach entering in this large uh, domed room. Okay, I'm gonna just like, like maneuver through the crowd to get like close enough to him where it's, I'm in his line of vision. Um, make a, I'm gonna say make an insight security check. Okay, it was like difficulty fitness. is one. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait. Inside security. Yes, I'm good. I have a, a success. Okay, you got a success. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got. I forgot which one to turn. Sage, as you're pushing through the crowd for a brief second, uh, as you are pushing through the crowd, you 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 stop for a second and glance back through the the throngs of people that you mm -hmm. see around you, and you're not sure if your eyes are playing tricks on you, but for a split second, for a split second, you thought you saw a very familiar Bajoran Vedic in the crowd. Whoa. And he was looking right at you. And as you kind of stopped and double-take, he's not there. I'll poop. 
Okay. <laughs> but you, you like, you just you saw him for a split second, just like you remembered him, and he was staring right back at you, soft, warm eyes, and then he's like, it's like a person says, "Excuse me," and like as you're getting past, and he's gone. Okay, I, I take a moment, and I and I and I look, and then I just think, it was my eyes. It's my mind playing trick on me because that's all I've been thinking about for the past few days is, is all of that. So I start walking towards Zadis again. Okay, you begin to walk up to Zadis. Um, he sees you approaching and goes, "Hey, right there. hey, hey!" He, he, you see, he's got your engineering tools that he's uh, using. He sets them down and says, "How's it going?" Okay. Did Mala get back okay? She, she's great. She's fine. Great. Yes. That's great news. Yeah, we're we're all great. Um, do, do you have a, a minute to? Do is, I have a minute? Is, he looks at the guys and they're like, yeah, yeah, uh, we're this is good. This bad. I just, I, I really need to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, let's talk. Um, okay, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'm going to yeah. grab his hand. Okay. And pull him away huh. from everyone. Yeah, like, okay. Off, off we're talking corner. now. We are talking. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> you, you pull him away and he, he stops. He's like, is everything okay? Is okay. it have to do with the Dauntless? It's like that. I, I, no, not the Dauntless. Okay, first of all, like the, the war and, 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 in the, the killing and, and this, I get it, and I'm sorry, and I should have understood, and I, I'm sorry oh, I made you leave. Oh, God. Sage. This is all my fault. No. I was, uh, look, I, I got your message. I, I'm, okay, so yeah, let's do this now. Yeah. Um, I am really sorry. You don't have anything to apologize about. I just feel bad. I, I was I was knee-jerking, you know, and I freaked out, and, and uh, thank you thank you for your message, and I, and I, Thank you for understanding and being there, and, and I'm sorry that I just, I mean, I laid into you, and you've been nothing but, you've been wonderful, and I'm... Thank you. I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't actually remember a lot of what I said to you. I, I, in fact, I don't really there remember a lot. There was a lot of lot. panicking and a lot of... Things. I've been talking to a counselor. And, That's great! Yeah, and it's... That's great. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to realize that when moments like that happen, I'm discovering that... I don't. Rem I don't always remember doing it. Um, in other words, I, I'm, I'm coming to grips with the with the fact that I'm. I'm. Uh, as Martinez would say, I'm. <laughs> I'm shook. <laughs> it's. It's okay. It's okay. And and uh, I'm here now. And 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 we can catch up and 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 talk about yeah. all the things. But Zadis, there was something happened on the ship. We we all. I mean, no one's really talking about it. I think no one really knows what to think of it. I don't know why no one's talking about it. Is it classified Starfleet stuff? Because I can't know it, and you'll get in trouble if you tell I don't me. think it's anything stuff. Like, I don't, I can't explain it. It's like, ooh, stuff. Do you remember? Do you, no, you don't remember. You weren't there either. Oh, dear. Um, okay. We, everyone, not everyone. Some of us had, like, a, a vision. Uh, the captain, Azadis was there. Talon was there. Um, not, not Zadis. Jiv, Mala, I, I Chief, gotcha. and 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 the Doctor, and and Commander Rue, and we were all in in space, but we weren't in space. And, and there was this Bajorn orb thingy. And then I re I remember I remembered uh, my mom. I remembered a song. I remembered things, and I can't find the song anywhere. And I I've looked everywhere, and I've looked for a lot of things. And also, do you like someone? Because he Cause... flinches. <laughs> he goes, "Do I like someone?" I think so. Whoa, I sorry, that was, a, that was that was a, that was just a I'm gear sorry. shift. And I'm sorry. There's a lot to think. There's a lot that happened. And yeah. do you like do you like someone? Because you never told me, and now <laughs> I feel like maybe we sh we weren't as honest. And I try to tell you everything. At least I try to. I might forget stuff. But why? Why? why I'm, out of curiosity. Oh. Okay, just I just want to I just want you to know where I'm at. Okay. That. In the, in the order of things that are important than what you just said, I feel like me liking someone is kind of uh, not that important. I but. know, but then at the same time, like I thought you liked someone, but now it's like you, now it's completely different from what you what I think you liked, and now I'm really confused. You had a cosmic vision, and you want to know about who I like? Uh, well, I mean, I mean we can't really solve grief. that now. Okay, okay, okay. But this okay, is something okay, that okay. we could solve now. Right? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um. Uh. Okay. Uh, did, 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 huh, did someone say something to you? I mean, not really. More of, more He of, leans in with not really? No, no one really said anything. I just get the inclination that it's more of a different thing than I thought of a thing. 
and I feel like Sage, I don't know what you're saying. I'm sorry. I don't. I'm trying to get this, but I'm I'm missing it. Are you asking me something? I I don't look. It, this can wait. <laughs> it, I'm gonna hear like the cheers or whatever. That's like, <laughs> happening. Yeah, well, we can talk. Yeah, we can yeah. talk about this later. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like pull you away from your thing. Wait, why did you pull me away? Was it because you wanted to tell me about this trippy universe event, or did you want to tell me All about... of the stuff! That is... I mean, we've only been gone for, like, what? I don't even know. A week? <laughs> How long have we gone for? A day. <laughs> we've been oh. gone for a couple days, and a lot has happened. God. Yeah, um... And I'm just trying to wrap my head around it, and my... And also, just, I don't know, all the memories of... of of things coming back to me and then it just made me realize that, you know, you're really the only person that I talk to ever. And wow. the only person that I can say any of this to and not look at someone looking at me like I'm a crazy person. Can I ask you something pretty straightforward? Sure. Why is that? Like, why don't you, I mean, I know that there's so many people on the Sally ride that, <laughs> that love you, Sage. Back off, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> why? I don't know, I just, I guess I feel comfortable around you. I feel, I mean, I feel really awkward around everyone. Hey, back off, too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you are Amy right now. <laughs> I'm not going to sick bay. I told you, I'm the stunt Amy. Yeah. I don't know. elevated temperatures. Uh -huh. I just feel comfortable around you, and you're easy to talk to, and then I feel like when we thought we lost you, and then we didn't lose you, and... I don't know. We had so many programs to do and that we had planned. And okay, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna be straight with you. Okay. Are you into me? Because I, I I I don't know what I'm interpreting. I have no, and I know that's like really blunt. But the thing is, is like, I uh, I I'm just I'm I'm so I'm just awful at this stuff. Like I'm used to engineering stuff, you know, and 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 equations make sense and machines make sense, and I'm so bad at this and. And, and I've wanted to know for a while now. Wait, hold up, ho, oh, wait, ho, ho. You like, is, it was me? Hold up. I just run. <laughs> just, <laughs> just run, turn and run. He watches you run away and goes, Can I? Did you want me to keep holding up? Oh, oh. Am I there, are they at the thing? <laughs> the house? <laughs> yeah. There. Can I notice them? Can I roll to see if I notice this? I'm sorry. I, uh. You always know you had a good scene when a player's like, can I please be there? Can I please be there? Oh, no. Um, can we you intervene? know what? In all honesty, Talon, <sighs> it has been a while since you had a scene, so yes. Okay, uh, what, what, what do I have to roll? What, what, well, tell me it is. Uh, tell what me what does Talon want to do? Like, what do you want Talon to do? I don't do know. Here? I just. <laughs> <laughs> roll, uh, um, well, okay. Character doesn't know all this inter. I, but, but, in all honesty, I feel like I would turn to run and like run into a wall and like pass out. <laughs> Talon, <laughs> are you feeling wall like at the moment? <laughs> I feel like I, I would run into someone or something. Like, yeah, I feel like I'm not going to get yeah. very far. Yeah, no, it could be. I can run into okay, Talon. Normally, I, I might make you spend a, a, a point of momentum for something like this, but I actually haven't been making y'all roll very much this game and I've been burning uh, through your momentum. So, yeah. Why don't, we, why don't we have a little fun and say that Talon was entering the scene just as you're exiting the scene okay. and you collide with a Lieutenant Commander Vulcan Science Officer. I imagine also that uh, Baker is here because she was the one who told me Baker about is event, here, but so she's... I went with her. Okay, I was going to say she was going to be waiting for you here. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, so, cool. so Dorothy is here. Okay, great. But, um, but uh, we'll just say, we'll, we'll say this. As you're turning to run, in the same instance this conversation was happening, Talon noticed her shipmates talking. Ah, there's Zadis. Exactly. And as you're approaching, oh. a frantic so lark pivots and collides with you. You get about two steps when you yeah. run into uh, one of the officers. Of Sage is 5'5", five five, so she probably yeah. like ran right you into your boots. bounce off of yeah. me. <laughs> ba -boom. Oh. And Zadis just goes, hi, Talon. Huh. Hello. Hi. Mr. Zadis. Good to see you. Well. I was just Thank filling you. Zadis in on all of the, the things that has happened since we've been away. Yes, the collapsing pulsar, I imagine. The collapsing pulsar, yeah. The, all the... <laughs> um... You know, I... A, a, as an engineer, there's I, one thing I'm really good at noting, and he reaches down and he picks up his toolkit and he goes, and that's when something just broke. Excuse me. And he <sighs> turns and starts walking back towards the control panel. My soul. Ensign Sage, 
I imagine he's not speaking of actual engineering. Okay, I am really bad at this stuff, Talon, and I feel like I should probably not be asking you because I don't think you might be not the best person to ask. If it is matters of the heart, I am learning, but no, I probably am not the... I don't even know if it's matters of the heart. I feel like... I don't know. I, I never thought of that, and then that was thinking of, and then I thought that something else was going on, and now it's not going on, but it's... Also... Can we talk about Bejor? <laughs> yes, I wanted to give you time and space. I knew you requested leave. I just... I know that you're, I guess, more... I, I don't know. I just... Whenever that stuff happened, the incident, you were the first person I saw, and I'm just starting to wrap my head around it, I guess. I don't feel anyone's really talking about it. <laughs> yes, no one has, as far as I know, or at least not with me. Perhaps because we are two of the crewmen and two of the senior staff who have Bajoran heritage, the vision or whatever it may have been affected us more deeply. That's the thing, I don't even know anything about my heritage. And I know very little. You probably know more than I do. Only by reading about it. Not by any actual real life experience. I, uh, Talon looks around and just to make sure no one's overhearing or anything. I did not know my Bajoran ancestors either. And it, my Bajoran heritage has, has been the source of much shame in my family, unfortunately. Do we know about her that she had Or am I just finding this out? I don't think Talon has actually advertised her Bajoran heritage Would it heritage be in her, like, her file? Or? Her file would definitely have that information. Okay. I probably read that, but, so. <laughs> okay. you read But it's definitely something too. Talon does not... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm saying this as if I don't know that right. you know, like I'm revealing it to you for the okay. first time. So you, you know. Okay, so then... I, um, I, not many people know this about me. So now you know. And that is perhaps why we saw each other first in that vision. But I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, we're all the way out in the Shackleton Expanse and... I've been doing some research on what we experienced and similar events that may have happened to others. And I believe we may have experienced a Bajoran vision or prophecy, perhaps. I'm unsure as to why in the Shackleton Expanse we would have experienced it, but there also was a phenomenon, if you remember. Perhaps we should go somewhere and Sorry, talk yeah, and talk. good idea. Can I mean, we, can we just look, I, I look yeah. around to see if there's a room that we can just scoot there into is, and yeah. talk, okay. So you guys are gonna, we're gonna have to do one more. Yeah, okay. So you guys of move off, and yeah. we're gonna cut to Martinez. Great. Oh. <laughs> do I have like big scissors or something? Like, yeah, all right. No, you're showing up to the docking, <laughs> docking bay, remember? To meet her. Um, oh, is this what? Hang on. This is the docking bay, this yeah. This is later that night? Get ready for your date, son. No, mm -hmm. you're meeting here her first before you go to the ceremony. Oh, okay. What? Yeah, she wanted. She asked you if you could meet her that because she had to do this first, and then she said we can go together. Remember? Can you go meet to, us? Can I you meet me at the docking bay? I have to over. I have to there. greet some of the new. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was gonna be like no, before no, no. dinner. Well, she has we to, were wrong. And this she is has happening. to greet the awesome. engineers that are coming on board, and then she can go to the ceremony. Great. Awesome. Great. Yeah, I'm at the docking bay. Well, this is before the ceremony. So yep. while all this is happening, you guys are going yep. to get there. So oh, you're there. So basically, as all of this is happening in the time span of the sh of what's going on, you guys would be arriving right now. Mm -hmm. But this is sort of like uh, moments ago. Mm -hmm. um, so at the docking bay. So as you're approaching the docking bay, um, you you see her. She's uh, you, you hear the <laughs> the clamping noises on the other side of the um, of the cargo bay um, as she's sitting there waiting and talking to one of the hands, and she sees you approach and smiles and she says, "Hi, thanks for meeting me here." Sure. 
I hope you don't mind. I just, uh... I want a reason to be pulled away if they come off. Sometimes these engineers corner me in conversation, and if I make sure that they know I've got somewhere to be. <laughs> I'm happy to be a distraction. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, everything, uh, everything's going, well, you look very nice. Thank you. Uh, this is the same as we saw me uh, yes, it is. minutes sorry, ago. Yes, I, I remember that now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Uh, You see the doors are coming open and you see a bunch of civilians walking off and she's nodding to them and um, she says, "Um, so uh, the ceremony, um, you said earlier it was a date. Yeah. Just want to make sure I heard that right. Sorry, you just want to make sure what? I heard that right. I didn't know. I I thought maybe I didn't hear. Yes. Okay. You did. That's all. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. I'm I'm good. I asked you out on a date. I said yes to that date. Yes. Good. I'm glad I... Because I remember thinking it, but I don't remember if I was going to say it. It looks like we've only got a couple minutes before more and more engineers start arriving. I'll, I'll be frank. Um, Tanya, I really enjoy spending time with you. I am attracted to you. <laughs> but it's also... It can be difficult to... The captain thing. It's Caleb. It's your brother, Caleb. Oh. When I'm with you, I think about Caleb, but then at the same time, that makes me feel good because I remember Caleb, my friend. And oh, I see what you're saying. Um, well, I, this isn't. This is neither good nor bad. I'm just. As in your mid sentence, I need you to make a roll. <sighs> this is going to be. Uh, I'm trying to flirt. Okay. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Inside security <laughs> check. Yeah. The difficulty oh. here is going to be one. One success. You. You're going to see it then. You're in the middle of talking to her, and you're just watching the people come and go, and Martinez, you stop in mid-sentence. There's a gentleman walking off the cargo, the cargo hold, um, dressed like an engineer, stepping down. Larger man, uh, white hair, probably in his late 60s. Um, He has a curious Starfleet insignia on his vest. No. It's very old probably previous generation Starfleet, and you know exactly who it is because you grew up reading about everything he's done in his life. You grew up reading about the things he did in the engineering section of the USS Enterprise. And is this older man with the lines on his eyes and a warm face as he steps down? I just like say into my breath, I'm like, Scotty. (laughs) And he just turns and looks at you and he approaches, um, he approaches Tanya, who has no idea. And says, <laughs> he just says, hello, lass. Uh, where would you be needing me? And that's where we have oh to stop God. for tonight. Oh, my gosh! Oh, she, I can't miss next week. I have to cancel the gig. <laughs> it's Scotty. Um, Scotty showed up. Yes, and I have to read off the winners real fast Ooh. to our contest. Um, do we have the winners to our con? You slacked me. Oh God! There's a delay on Slack. Oh. There's yeah. There's a lag on Slack. Ah, we got it. We got the we got the winners here. Okay, for the codes, that's Chandra Vid E G. Chandra V D E E G. So congratulations and the seven star general. You guys are getting the codes. Yeah. Um, for the uh, starter packs. Well done. And then for the PDFs, we have Tonton Nine Nine. Welcome to Star Trek. Tonton Nine Nine. Congratulations and Ashley Throp. Congratulations, Yay! y'all! Yeah. Totally Great won that. Names also, all. Yeah. To, to, to the folks in Minneapolis waiting in line to get into a contest. Yeah. Yes. 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 Right now. We know <laughs> that people at Emerald City Comic Con are watching this episode. No. Marscon in Mars Minneapolis. Mars the- Marscon? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, everybody. Mars. Yeah. 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 Mars. Yeah. Told me that they saw yeah. some people watching while waiting for the opening ceremony. We have some so. friendly eyes. eyes. Yep. Go probably, say hi to him. Probably in Emerald City also. Yeah. B Dave, thank you so much for joining us again. And once again, what an episode. Does not have a conversation. Yeah, once again, you guys are about to go. Oh, no. So we're going to so we're gonna have to jump out pretty fast yeah. now. You gave but, me uh, to buy my mom I, did, I met you, yes. I know. We never met. Yeah, we're we're going to have to, yeah, we'll have to do that. Um, so we're going to have to wrap it up, but definitely catch us back here uh, wow. next Friday for the next episode of Shore Leave at Last. Until yes. then, hailing frequencies are closed. Wow.